And we're live. Welcome to another episode of Watch Talk with the Punters. My name is Blue Shirt. My co-host is the ever-popular Thomas Burnett. Hi there, everyone. Welcome to a great show you've got in store here for you today. We've got a great show for you today. Yep. Yeah. Um, our guest panelist is uh, the Rancher. Welcome, Rancher. Hey, thanks for having me. Welcome. Hi, and our very, very, very special guest. Um, for all you guys, all our friends, um, you know um, our guest, uh, Rick Remaker. Um, he's a very humble guy, but I'm going to say he is a super collector. And we are very humbled and, and very uh, and th thrilled to be able to, for the first time, go through his entire collection. Um in public. So yeah. thank you, Rick. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for letting us do this. See, I don't if, know. You're not I don't... If, you're, if you're not comfortable, everyone, get yourself a nice cup of coffee or a, a beer or something to relax with. Get yourself a nice seat and get ready to watch because you've right. got a treat in store for you today. And uh, I, see, you, I don't know. I don't know you, if I... you won't want to miss this. I don't know if Curb the Super Collector really applies here because. Rick is kind of a curve buster. I mean, I, I've heard that term bandied about quite a bit. Some place, sometimes just leaps, other times maybe quite not so much. And there needs to be a level, you know, it's it's like it's like he needs to be a six-star general instead of a five-star general or a four-star general. <laughs> need a higher term than super. Uber collector? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, you're all too. You're all too kind. I appreciate the invite. Uh, we're going to have some fun uh, in the chat. Ask away. You know, I'll try to keep up with the comments along with uh, the rancher and and uh, Thomas and Bruce, and uh, we'll we'll try to respond as best we can. Um, should be a good. Should be a good after a, a good day. Good yep. evening. A good afternoon. Yeah, definitely. And like uh, like uh, Thomas was saying, um, get comfortable, get a drink, get a snack. Uh, and and buckle yourself in because this is going to be a very enjoyable ride uh, this afternoon. So, should um, I send, uh, send uh, Dr. Sanders the link? Um, sure, you could do that. Sure, right. sure. Uh, I was just gonna, I was just gonna welcome in some some of our friends, uh, Chaz from the Berg, Ken Spear, Bobby Smith, Junior Johnson, uh, Wilson, Rohit R, uh, Dr. Bill Sanders. Uh, our good friend, Howdy from Texas. How's it going, Howdy, man? Good to see you. Howdy. Mason One, Sanjay, Dan T, Riss Ross, uh, Wolfgang, Fries with Mayo, Tim Queenan, uh, Curtis, uh, Flip and Zippo. Chris, I sent you the link as I always do. Please join us. Um, Manor Joseph, Jeffrey Deach. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you guys Absolutely. are piling in, um, and uh, we really appreciate you tuning us in. Peter C., good to see you, pal. Um, unfortunately, we do not have Anna something with us uh, this uh, week, but um, Tom uh, is going to uh, – has got a couple of news stories for us, so we'll start off with yeah, that. We're going to keep gonna it brief. I'm going to attempt to fill in for NS something. I've I've got a few new stories, but I blue shirt said we're going to keep it brief because Rick is our main attraction today, and uh, we he's got plenty in store for us. So uh, we don't be have too much time with news. So the first uh, news item was the Louis Erard Excellence Guilloche Main. This is a checkered Guilloche dial reminiscent of uh, M C Escher. Uh, images. It's uh, consistently offering affordable timepieces that punch way above the price point. Louis Arad has collaborated with various independent watchmakers. The email, the uh, Grand Fur Enamel um, was one of the watches that came before. This is a, this style is made by Fair of Le Chaux de Fon, Fon and established uh, Specialist that supplies dials to the likes of Cartier, Vacheron, Constantin, and Zenith. And it's engraved with an old fashioned hand operated straight line engine lathe, uh, an entirely tr traditional decorative technique that um, 
is familiar yet painstaking to execute. Unusually, the dial is not monochrome. It's uh, mostly gish, as most guiche dials are. And the uh, di three-dimensional effect is uh, reinforced by a layer of black varnish applied to the dial prior to engine turning, which removes the topmost surface of the pan. And the final step is rhodium plating that highlights the engraved proportion portions with a bright silvery finish, giving a checker dial, a checker gear shade with an eye-catching shimmer. I think it's a gorgeous dial, this. It's uh, coming in at 3,900 3, Swiss francs, which is about uh, $4,200. It's uh, 42 millimeters, and it's using a Salita SW261 automatic uh, movement. It's uh, limited to 99 pieces, direct from Louis Arad online. And uh, it's, it's a lovely looking watch. I really like it. Yeah, I, I believe we the the guys on uh, the Amon uh, live stream on Tuesday and, and Bobby Legs on, on Friday, I believe on one of those shows, the boys uh, touched on, on this watch. Uh, definitely interesting. Um, um, not exactly my cup of tea, but um, I can appreciate the, car, uh, the craftsmanship going into this. Um, Very like an MC Escher painting. Uh, mm -hmm. print. Yeah, as you can see. So, should we uh, we'll skip on? We'll sure, skip on we the can next do that. One. And there was a, a release from Bell and Ross, which was the BR V294 Full Loom. And uh, this is a 41mm watch. It uses a caliber BR caliber. 301, which is basically an ETA 2892 with a Dubois de Bras chronograph movement on top. It's uh, coming in at $5,100 and limited to 250 pieces. It uses a green C C5 superluminova on the dial and hands with yellow uh, C3 superluminova. And in daylight, it has a passing resemblance a bit to the uh, Breitling Premier Pistachio dial. But, uh, Look at that at night, loom. At night, it's, it's really loomed up, yeah. But unless you, unless you want a full loom on the... Tu unless you really want full loom, the Tudor Panda has a technically superior movement, they're, they're saying. So uh, hmm. Hmm. Clyde, Clyde, Clyde's got that watch, so he's, he's in the uh, best ballpark there. So, uh, but an interesting one for the full loom fans, and they, Bell and Ross have done full loom before on their um, mm -hmm. pilots watches, and uh, yeah, coming in for full loom now on one their their round watches with a a chronograph. Definitely, uh, definitely interesting. Um... I don't own a full loom watch, a full loom dial watch. Um, I don't know if, if this one b would be for me. Uh, a little expensive, but uh, definitely nice. I mean, how can you not love that? If you're any kind of loom junkie, uh, you got to love a full loom dial. Yeah, absolutely. Wait, are you saying the Tudor Pantograph uh, has a full loom dial? No, the two the pandas don't. But um, okay, this 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 is this one. If you want a full loom dial, this this is a, gotcha. a new an option for you. Yeah, I was about to run into the next room and get the flashlight. All right, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we saved you a trip. That's good. Yes. Yeah. I've also named that watch. It's 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 officially called Sexual Harassment Panda. <laughs> nice. Shall we uh, go on to the next one, Thomas? Yeah, we'll move to the next one. It's the Remonte Time Capsule. And uh, located in Renaissance, a five-hour drive south of Paris, Orology V. Remonte is named after its founder, Valentin Remonte, a young watchmaker who spent three years at Tapoya and then Breguet before starting out on his own, making conventional round watches with ETA movements. And since then, he's moved on to watch a very inventive and modern in style and construction 
This latest watch, the time capsule, has an unorthodox regulator style display along with an unconventional hour striker. 90% of the watch is made in France, and Mr. Mr. Romante says he fabricates the much of the watch himself, including the gaskets for the case with some of the components produced by French micro machining specialists. The only parts purchased from a Swiss supplier are the balance wheel, hairspring, barrel assembly, rubies, and the Inca block spring. And the uh, retrograde minutes are displayed in a fan shaped scale, while the hours are displayed in a rotating drum located at 12 o'clock. The constant seconds takes a four, a four armed propeller just below the minute scale so it's quite an interesting one in this one mm. uh, more unusual is the hour striking mechanism instead of a conventional resonant chime the hour striker relies on a bronze gong to sound the metallic tap once an hour and the construction mm. of the movement connects to the, connects to the gong to the bridges and then the case back allowing the vibration of the hourly strike to be felt with the watch on the wrist. And the uh, time is set using this crown on the front. So it's a really interesting one, this one. Really a bit of an oddball. It's yeah, coming look in, at that. Uh, coming in at 17,000 euros, which is about $21,000, direct from Remonte. Mm. The cap time capsule is made to order, and it's 43 millimeters by 43 millimeters with a 14 millimeters thick. And yeah, it's 48 hours power reserve, and it's a bit, bit of an oddball, but quite an interesting one. Nice to see watches being made differently. Right, right. I mean, this I, is going to wear big. Uh, you know, the, the Monaco is, is 39 by 39, and that wears much bigger. Um, so this yeah. is 43 by 43 is really going to be... This is going to be a size of watch. Box. That's a puzzle box from Hellraiser. Absolutely. If, if like you touch the wrong combination of buttons, the watch will restructure itself, itself <laughs> and you're going to meet and you're going to meet you're going to meet Pinhead in the Cenobites. That costs yeah, extra. You just got to, you just got to work out how to read the time on it. It's, it's with, with with all these uh different right. um retrograde minutes displayed in a fan shaped scale and the mm -hmm. hours displayed on a rotating drum at 12 o'clock and the constant seconds on a Forearm propeller just below the minute scale. It's a, uh, it's bewildering. It's a. Uh... Indeed, indeed. All right. Uh, we'll and move the, on from this one to the, the last the one. Last, the last one was just the the Rolex Artisan de Genève. Uh, the um, the uh, moon phase that came out. They came out with, which was. Uh, this is a customization that they'll do for you for 32,500 euros. That's without the price of the watch. Right. So they're now If you doing can a, find it. Yeah, if you can find it. So they're, they're doing a moon phase, which is interesting. Another customization. It's like, a bit like Bamford and uh, Mad mm -hmm. Paris and uh, Artisan de Genève uh, doing a moon phase for a submariner which i thought was a an interesting one for the rolex heads out there Wouldn't, yeah is that, um, some, is that something you'd really want on a submariner uh, for me that's a hard no um and you know w once you do this to a watch you know rolex wants nothing to do with you ever yeah. again that's the only downfall yeah exactly yep. bit of a contentious issue isn't it yeah, but cool. Uh, I mean, you know, yeah. nobody else is going to have anything like this. So if, no. if, if that's what floats your boat, then, you know, hey. What's your opinion on these customizations, Ray? Yeah, you know, I think it's cool looking. I personally wouldn't spend that kind of money. Um, I probably wouldn't spend a lot of money on any kind of customization. I either like the watch the way that the manufacturer made it or not. Or like a lot of the guys in the in the uh, the subscribers have done, you know, they're they're opting for these uh, customized watches with RGM, um, you know, or others that are uh, uh, Satori Billard, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you want something kind of customized, I think you go that route. I agree. Yeah. 
Yeah. I agree. But interesting, and you know, you 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 can't knock the 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 detail of their work because it, it you know it's 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 obviously you know well executed. Um, then hey, you know, uh, like I said, it, this isn't going to be for everybody, but you know, definitely, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, craftsmanship involved here. Yeah, true, but. Not, not an fan into customizing watches. On the other hand, growing up in the 70s, I really have a true affinity for Bamford and Son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm bump. All right. And on that note, we'll say goodbye to this. And we will say hello hop to Rick. our special guest. Yeah. Oh, and we've got another special guest. We have Dr. Bill Sanders joining us. Welcome, Bill. Bill. Hi, how are you doing? Hey, Bill. You. Oh, you, you you joined us just at the perfect time because we're just about to, uh, and I hope you're comfortable because we're just about to start uh, our journey into Rick's uh, fantastic collection. Yeah, I I I'm I'm always confused Absolutely. about adding to this uh, how to work it. <laughs> so sorry. No worries, no worries. All right, so we will. Go to screen share, and we will so start. So, Rick, tell us about how you got into watches, then. What? what yeah. What so, um, yeah, this is a good. Uh, this is a good shot to start with. So, mm. yeah, as a as a uh, as a teenager, probably like most of you, I always wore a watch. I uh, I wore a a Swatch watch, kind of a gray watch, gray dial with some colorful indices and colorful hands. I spent, uh, I spent about an hour and a half uh, uh, on, on the internet scouring, trying to find a, a picture of that watch because I wore it for years and years. Do you have any idea how many watches Swatch made? Uh, you, you probably do. I mean, they made a zillion. Million. Like, right, million, right. Million, yeah. You know, so I could not find it, but I remember the watch and I wore it all the time and uh, really, really, really liked it. And then, um, you know, so I, uh, you know, I'm in my, I'm in my, uh, early 60s so that gives you a feel for uh sort of the time frame here so in 1984 uh you know i'm out of college and uh, a few years at that point in time and like a lot of people when i made my first real money i went and bought a rolex watch that was a rolex date just it wasn't exactly like this but uh you know i've got kind of a small wrist this was a 31 millimeter watch so think about that in today's standards clearly a, a women's watch uh, but 31 millimeter was a, they classified it and it was named a mid-sized watch back then. Mm -hmm. And I wore that watch for years and years and years. And, you know, interesting story. I just sold the watch in the last few months. Uh, after I wore it, my, my wife wore it for a number of years and then it just became excess. But, you know, like a lot of things, here's a good tale of, you know, I paid X for it kept it for, you know, whatever, I guess nearly 40 years, right? 30 some years and uh, sold it for, you know, more than I paid for it. Uh, you factor in time value of money and the servicing and everything else. And, mm -hmm. you know, who knows whether it was a good investment. And I don't, I don't buy watches as investments. They're the personal passion, but, uh, you know, I love that watch. And uh, when I gave it to my wife, I had it redialed um, with something a little more feminine than what I had. Um, you know, and then, uh, you know, a number of years later in 2005 to kind of mark another career achievement, I, I bought a, a Reverso, uh, a, a day night Reverso duo. So mm -hmm. dual day and night. that's the night, that's the night side. And I kept that watch and wore that for a long time. And then sort of the next thing, uh, uh, and I owned all three of these watches for a long time. The next watch I bought in 2009 was, a a Rolex Milgoss. This is right, uh, I think, the year they came out, maybe a year after they came out. Still in their catalog, maybe not for much longer. Um, interesting, you know, when I bought that Rolex, I could have bought uh, some Mariner, I could have bought a GMT, I could have bought a lot of things that would have gone way up in value. That watch didn't do anything, that watch didn't do anything value-wise for, right. you know, the, 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 the years and years and years, the 20-some years that I owned it. But I enjoyed it, and again, I think you're going to see a, a theme this afternoon. Of I'm a, I'm a sucker for something that's a little unusual, shape wise, dial wise. I fell in love with the orange indices. The I call it the Coke bottle uh, type 
uh, crystal that's on there that, you know, I don't think, I'm not aware of any other watch that has that. And then the lightning bolt hand. And a lot of people don't yeah. like this watch. I, I fell in love with it. Simple, easy to wear, 40 millimeters. This one too, just sold it for more than I paid for it. Um, not true with everything that I've that I've sold, but uh, what was the case with this uh, watch as well. So um, those were sort of the, the the watches that I owned for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, stick on this picture, but I'll tell the, I'll tell the story, and then we'll get into the the current collection, and and uh, we'll go watch by watch chronologically on on what I have. And I've, I've and I've purchased and sold a lot of watches. By no means am I a flipper. I am truly a collector, passionate collector. I'm not a flipper. I'm not in this for the monetary gain by any means at all. Uh, but 10 years ago, my wife and I celebrated our 20th wedding anniversary. We uh, oh, took a trip to, took a trip to New York and uh, you know Janet uh, we, we decided to upgrade the diamond in her engagement ring pretty substantially and you know what do guys do? Uh, I don't wear a lot of other jewelry really. the only thing I wear is a watch. Right. So we spent uh, we spent the weekend watch shopping on you know Madison Avenue and in nice. all of the boutiques and uh, and I you know I just wasn't really sure. I thought I was going to buy a Breguet. Uh, wasn't really sure. Looked around. You know, went to Turno, went to uh, Vempi, went to you know a lot of the lot of the boutiques on Madison Avenue. Mm -hmm. Stumbled in at the end of the day on the second day. Stumbled in kind of right after lunch into a, a brand I I knew nothing about. A boutique on Madison Avenue, F. P. Jorn, hmm. and. Uh, you know, so that's, uh, you know, 10 years ago, they were on the map, but not all that well known at that point in time. And I fell in love, fell in love with the story, fell in love with the rarity. And uh, four hours later, decided to purchase a rose gold uh, chronomet souverain. Um, which I wow. loved and loved. And you'll see a picture of a representation of that watch because I actually then a number of years later, traded that into Watchbox on another Jorn, and uh, and then rebought that watch. I've, I've only I've only repurchased a couple of watches. Uh, you know, another one that I that I'm wearing. I'm out in California for a few days. Another one that I have with me as I'm traveling a, a Rolex uh, white gold on Oyster Flex Daytona. Not the mm -hmm. world's biggest Daytona fan at all, but I happen to love that combination, that color combination on the dial. That's another one that I traded in. And then missed having it and and rebought uh, a number of years later. So it was really that uh, that trip ten years ago that started on my journey. And then you know coinciding with that, uh, the 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 Facebook groups, you know, Orology Talk, uh, <coughs> Bill, your channel, uh, you know, and then and then and then YouTube. And you know, I think that that. You know, just an expensive independent watch brand and owning at that point four watches, you know, I started doing a lot more. I definitely was influenced by a lot of people and a lot of things, made a lot of good purchases, made a lot of silly purchases uh, along the way too. As, so, we, as uh, we all do, as we all yeah. do. So, yeah. Yep. Mm. So, mm. so we will just. Part, uh, of part, of the, part of the learning process of the hobby really, isn't it? It really yeah. is. It really is. So let's move into yeah. the first picture. Yeah. This so this lovely is a ball. Ball conductor chronograph. Uh, like so many watches these days, it's a limited edition. I don't, you know, but, but I don't, I really don't see this one posted. I mean, God, how no, many watch you don't. How many watch groups no. are we all in? And I just don't see this on Instagram or YouTube or a lot of different places. I mean, I've seen one or two, but, you know, I was drawn to the, <laughs> look, at the look at the number seven. I don't know why it's red, but mm. um, and it actually says ball at the top of that at the top of the seven, and then the case it's, shape. It's and the, the, case shape. The, Van, the Vanderbilt chronograph, isn't it? Isn't it, uh, Rick? It's the, you know, um, I I just I like the case shape. I don't wear it that much. It sits a little heavy, but it's nice to have a watch that you know a lot of other people don't have. And uh, I strictly bought this on the looks of the, the dial. You can't see it great in that picture, but it's got kind of a, a checkerboard on the corners, sort of a checkerboard dial pattern. Um, you know, and I, I've got a bunch of chronographs, as you'll see as we go through all of this. I don't really 
I mean, occasionally, but don't regularly use my chronograph. I'm more drawn to the to the looks. I know, Bill, you're not a uh, you know you're not a fan of chronographs. Um, for me, it's not function. It's more aesthetics. And a lot of my watches I purchased on dial aesthetics more than more than anything else. Not all of them, but but many of them. So you know that's the story there. I do think Ball is a brand that doesn't get a lot of attention. I think they're pretty good values, particularly pre-owned. I mean. We all know this is an experience group. We yes. all know that there are certain brands you just need to buy pre-owned, and Ball Correct. will be one of those. Is either get it at get it at a big discount or buy it pre-owned. Mm -hmm. Now, that, yeah, yeah, this is a pretty clean one for a chronograph. Uh, it, my big problem with chronograph has always been you can't just tell the time because there's so many subdials. But the way they set this up is really cool, and I and I like the way the subdials. Uh, clip the 10 and the 8 and the 2 and the 4. There's something about that that, I don't know, and that mm. 7, the red 7, I, that was the first thing that I saw was that red 7 is a cool font set too. But this, you know, uh, like I said, Rick, this is a fun watch to have. It's, yeah, uh, and I, I love the clipping, 12 o'clock date clipping, too. Clipping the numerals, that either that e that's either something that doesn't bother people or it drives some people nuts. I've got a handful True. of watchers True. where where the numbers are clipped, and I mean, some people it just revolts them. Yeah, it's it's well laid out. Um, I, I a lot of the ball watches I'm kind of indifferent on, but this one I I like a lot. It's a really uh, it's a really nice looking piece. Ball, ball does uh, you, you know Thomas had that watch on the news that. Uh, the, I think the Bell and Ross that was fully loomed. Uh, uh, these are micro tubes on most ball watches. Mm -hmm. They're they're uh, the loom is really good, really strong, and really bright. Now, how long have you had this? Just about nine years, I think. Yeah. How's the strap holding up? Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. It's thick. It's kind of a thick stitch. You know, more of a sporty type yeah, strap, good. not a dress watch. All right, so we will move right. right along to the next piece. You guys know where I'm going with this, so I'm not going to bother. <laughs> so this is the Omega Omega. Master Planet Ocean Pai Gong Chang. Yeah. This is the yeah. 2018 model. Yeah, saw this uh, posted when Omega released it uh, early in my collecting experience, you know, paid full retail. Um probably overpaid for the watch. Had I been patient, I'm sure I could have picked it up for less. But what's cool here is, you know, like a lot of the Omegas, comes in a really cool box, came with the mm -hmm. strap, and I fell in love with that strap. I just thought, what a, I mean, Omega, Omega does yeah. some rubber strap really, really well. That and the, comes they with do. the and the strap, and, you know, a bunch of really nice stuff, uh, limited, like all Omegas, limited edition of 2018 pieces to celebrate the Olympics. I didn't wear this watch a lot. I posted this yesterday on my Instagram. And then I think a lot of us end up doing this. You end up kind of falling in love with a watch again. And I've been wearing this a bunch lately. I've got it with me uh, on this trip that I'm that I'm on. And, you know, I, I considered selling this and I've kind of fallen in love with it again. And, you know, I'm going to I'm going to hold on to it. I really mm. I thought it was too big for me. And you can see it on the right. I don't think it's too big. It's no, uh, not at all. A big watch, but not uh, not too big. And uh you know, just fell in love with it. Great watch. Keeps great Yeah, the time. Planet Oceans are the favorite die. The favorite of my divers that I'm doing. Yeah. Right. And then, yeah, like, the Planet Oceans are the, 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 favorite, the favorite, favorite divers that uh, Omega do for me, I think. The favorite Seamasters is much more than the, uh, the Bond style divers. Mm hmm. What were you saying, uh, Rancher? It's all right. All right, so we will um, move on. Step from, up again. Move on from the Omega to uh, a stunning FP Jorn. Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah look at this. Platinum An case. FP Jorn Octo Automatic Havana. Wow. Havana dot. I'm really not aware of anybody else that does sort of this light chocolate, uh, milk chocolate Havana type dial. It's just uh, stunning. Yeah. Love that. Love that. I'd say the, the mistake I made on this was trading in the, the Chronomet Souverain. I, I should have kept that uh, at the time. Mm -hmm. I traded that in and ended up repurchasing it. Fortunately, I repurchased it at a really, really good price at the right time and, mm -hmm. and uh, just recently sold that here in the last month as well. 
uh, uh, you know, as I'm retired now, I don't wear dress watches as much, but mm -hmm. this watch, I just absolutely, absolutely love because of the uniqueness of the color. I'm a sucker for moon phase. I don't really use a moon phase in any, uh, you know, for anything, uh, you know, for anything useful, but I love the aesthetics of a moon phase. And I think Jorn does that really, really well. I had made a deal with a watch with something like this. It was an uh, Okta with a dealer in Beverly Hills. And so we had a deal and I was going to get it. So uh, he, he gets back in touch with me and says, gee, I'm sorry. Uh, one of my one of my regular customers came in and he wants it. And so I figure, OK, that's the way it goes. You know, this guy has somebody who comes in a lot and buys a lot of watches from him. So I get bumped. That's, you know, that's OK. So what happened? I thought, well, I'll go out and find something else I like. And I got this great deal on a 2002 uh, brass dial resonance, uh, FP Jorn resonance. And so I got that. The guy calls me back about two weeks later and says, oh, the guy decided he doesn't want it. Do you still want it? I should have said yes back then, but I didn't. I had, now I already got another one. But that it, I love the Havana dial. Uh, yeah, uh, let me ask you something. This watch, when you have it fully wound, uh, Rick, does it go up to uh, 120 or to zero? Now, on the ones I have, you wind them all up and they go to zero like the old time chronographs, mm -hmm. uh, the old ship uh, chronographs. So, Bill, I forget the uh, but I know all the all the manuals go one way. All the automatics go. The, the power reserve goes the opposite way. This is an automatic. So this okay. goes opposite of your chronomet souverain. Gotcha. Mm. Uh, I, I mean. It's a stunning watch, Rick. Uh, Amazing. Uh, and in platinum to boot, it's just, no, that's just the icing on the cake. This now, baby's, got a, lot of, this baby's got a lot of battle scars. I, I wear this and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's well worn. As it should yeah, be. As it should be, absolutely. Yeah, that's what you should be doing with it, wearing it. It's stunning. All now, right. How yeah, many go ahead. Jorns have the Havana dial? Is it just this one or are there other no. ones? No, nope, they, 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 they introduced it with this, and then you could buy this watch without the moon phase as well. And then maybe a year later or two years later, they also put it into the uh, chronometer right. super Yeah. The, the okay. time only, uh, time and power reserve. Yeah. Um, nice. Wow. Okay. So we'll, as stunning as this is, we will move on to the next one. And a beautiful uh, JLC. Yeah. Fell in oh. love with the. The blue dial. I think JLC does blue dials really well. I, I, I think IWC, Agreed. I think you guys talked about it last week. I think IWC does blue dials really well. I don't own mm -hmm. an IWC. But this is a, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I forget the, 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 you know, limited. This is limited a geo, geophysic true seconds, this one. I think. Yeah, so this, uh, this, uh, and unless something has a geophysic true seconds, I believe. It does. Yeah. Yep. So this ticks, you know, uh, this is a yeah. deadbeat. Dead beat second, which is actually yeah. really, really, really complicated, you know. But a lot of uninformed people, if they see the watch, uh, you know, if they see a video of the of the watch running, they, you know, think it's a Looks quartz like watch. A quartz, yeah. I love the watch. Um, you know, if I have any complaint, it's got a little bit of a weak power reserve, but I think mm -hmm. it's a great everyday wear. I'm a, you'll you'll see throughout here. I'm a little bit of a I'm a little bit of a JLC fanboy, so I've got I've got a handful. Uh, You're not uh, the uh, only one, Rick. You're not the, you, yeah, you know, yeah. NS something and myself are both JLC fanboys. And so. me, yeah. We love JLC. Now, is Tim also your illegitimate son? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I agree. I mean, you know, IWC does a blue dial, um, and, and, and JLC also does an amazing, amazing uh, blue dial. And this watch is just, it's beautiful. And the Vacheron overseas is a gorgeous blue dial as well, I think. Yeah. Yep. That's mm -hmm. one. Yes. Mm. All right. So we will move on from the JLC All right. to a Rolex and a Mulgauss. The, the, the discontinued white dial of the Rolex Mulgauss. This is a great one. You've already shown us the Mulgauss that you had earlier on, Rick, and uh, now you've got the gorgeous white dial. Yeah, so this one I sold the I sold the original one, but I, I, I wear this. Of all the watches that I post on YouTube uh, or uh, Instagram, 
this gets probably amongst the most um, likes and comments. And, mm -hmm. you know, I bought this standard uh, full set, you know, on, on the bracelet. And then mm -hmm. uh, somewhere I saw somebody, uh, you know, probably a Chrono 24, I saw one configured like this. That's a rubber bee strap. I think Everest and rubber bee yeah. yeah. straps really well. That's a rubber bee orange strap. And this is sort of my beach watch and um, time only. Bought this, you know, before things went up. I think I paid, you know, I don't know, like four grand for this. And yep. and it doesn't really matter. I mean, it, it's a watch I wouldn't sell. But, um, you know, I just love the, I love the color combination. You know, kind of bold, the, the indices, the lightning bolt hand with the strap. The rubber bee strap is really high quality and comfortable and mm -hmm. just a fun everyday watch. I was yeah, just going to say, I, I mean, gray, it looks great on the orange strap. It matches the indices and the second hand so well. Just... It, re it really does. Um, you know, I, I like the Milgauss. My favorite, um, favorite two are the just the plain da black dial and, and this discontinued uh, white dial with, with the orange accents. It just, and you put it, matching it on that, on that uh, orange rubber B is just, is just perfect. Uh, and it really pops. Really good looking. Really does pop. Yeah, really great. Great looking. All right. So we'll leave the Milgauss. And another beautiful FP Jorn. Go back to an FP Jorn chronometer souverain. Here we go. Right. This is a. Uh, is this the one you bought back? Yeah, that's uh, that's what started my collecting journey. Uh, that exact watch. Uh, uh, traded it in on that Havana dial, Octoloon. Um, and then uh, just recently decided to part with this um, simply because of a commitment I made on some some other watches uh, that I've purchased that you'll see at the end of this. And I needed to lighten up a little bit more of a dress watch. And again, I find myself in shirt shorts and t-shirts more often than not so uh mm -hmm. you know there's nothing that i didn't like about it it's a beautiful watch but you know like a lot of jorns it went up a lot in value and it was time to uh to find a new owner so oh uh, God, that that this is my favorite watch of, of all of them um the thing that i like about chronomet surveys and i guess they're on the blues and and the other uh chronomets is the uh, parallel uh, dual barrels. There are very few watches I found that have the dual barrels in parallel. And uh, I just love them. I had, I had mine uh, gone, it went to uh, Miami for the uh, FP Jorn service and they, they take very good care of me on that. Mm -hmm. But this is, this is one of my very favorite watches. Hey, Bill, you probably know this, but uh, you know, back when I first bought the the, the 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 CS from the boutique in New York sitting in the case I could have purchased a chronomet blue at the same time at less money but it oh didn't my. have didn't have the power reserve it was a little the blue was a little you know a little too out there I'm you know my before I retired I was a, a, a banker in, in financial services so it was a little a little while so you know how about that for a collecting a collecting mistake the same exact thing happened to me Rick uh, I got the platinum because I didn't have a platinum watch. That was the only reason. Uh, mm -hmm. But they had uh, blues for about, I think they were about 22 back then, something like that. And, uh, you know, you can go down to the uh, the boutique on Madison and pick one up. But, you know, that changed. The thing about uh, F.P. Jorn that surprised me was that they changed so quickly from easy to get to very difficult and very expensive and everything else. And, uh, but I, I enjoy them just as a watch to wear uh, more than anything else. That's, a, I love the gold ones too. Hey, so I learned something. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but I learned something new yesterday that I hadn't heard and I hadn't seen the news anywhere else. Uh, but I was watching a, a, a watch box, uh, I think market wrap or something with, uh, with Mike uh, Manders back in Philly. Um, mm -hmm. But he's a Giants fan, Bruce. So you know. That's yes, cool. I know. So, um, <laughs> but, but he but he said, and they had uh, George Mayer on. George, George is a pretty big uh, Jorn expert. You know, one of the mm -hmm. one of the one of the real knowledgeable Jorn guys. Jorn has terminated the distribution 
for all their ADs in the United States, not Canada, uh, but and not in the rest of the world yet. Uh, but all ADs, they're going to be boutique only. And as if I'm correct, I think it's New York, LA, and Miami. And those are the wow. Extended- Wow. That is big news. That is that is big that, news. Yep. I can hardly wait till it's back open so I can go back there again. It's sort well, of like you know, I just sort of go there and hang out and uh and I hope they have the uh, show in October again so we can meet up like we did what yes. back uh, two years ago. Yep. Right. Yeah. Yep. Um and, and and just going back for a second, then we'll move on. Um, I don't think you made a mistake, um, Rick. Uh, uh, yeah, the the Chronomet Blue is 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 the hot the hot Jorn and the one that everybody wants. But this watch is absolutely gorgeous, and I Amazing. think yeah, I I, I I don't think you made a mistake. Thank Not you. at all. Not at all. No. Oh, and Bruce, this time could you leave the picture up until I'm finished? Thanks. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, we'll go. We'll uh, go to the next. We'll go to the next one, Blue Show, which is a cracking watch. It is. Yep. Another. We, we were talking about blue dials earlier on, and this is the blue dial Rolex Skydweller. I mean, this this is the one everyone wants, isn't it? I uh, the- I wear the heck out of this watch. Um, I, I I you know I get it. Maybe we'll get it in the chat today from somebody. I get all the time. What's your favorite watch? I, you know, I don't have a favorite. If I don't like watch, if I find that I'm not wearing a watch, I end up trading it or selling it. But of the watches that I wear most often, this is way up there. Um, really? I ordered this watch the day that it was introduced. I was very close to pulling the trigger on a Skydweller, you know, which at that time they were only in precious metal. And I was going to buy. I think the rose gold on a leather strap, which would have been, you know, I think I could have bought it pre-owned for maybe a little under $30,000. Then they introduced these in steel at $14,400 at Basel World 2017, I think, 16 or 17. I walked into my AD, I uh, plopped down full, you know, there was no deposit. I paid 14,400, you know, Mm -hmm. immediately. One year it took to deliver this watch. And I got it exactly a year later. So Basel World the next year, 2018, I think. And um, a year later, the AD still hadn't received another one um, in this color. They tell me really? that this watch is harder. And Bruce, you probably, uh, you, you can probably verify this. You, you know, my the, the couple of Rolex ADs that I have relationships with say, the Blue Skydweller is harder and more rare to acquire and they get fewer of them than they do, um, uh, you know, steel Daytonas, black or white steel Daytonas. Really? Uh, so, all right. It is the hardest Rolex to get, hands down. Really? Far and above. The, wow. the, 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 the fewest produced and the, you know, more than a Pepsi, more than a the Daytona, more than anything else. Uh, it is the Blue Dial Sky, uh, Sky Dweller. Stunning watch, absolutely. And I don't wear. I don't blame you, Rick, for wearing the hell out of this because this is just it it, it. it it covers a lot of bases. This watch. Yep. Yes, yeah, stunning. I mean, the, the com- just the complications are great. Complication. I love the way that the twelve month calendar does the goes across the indices for the months. I mean, I, I guess I, I, the most I complicated. It. The most complicated watch. Rolex currently makes, but, but it's also, if you yeah. played with one, go in, it's really easy to, it's very, I mean, that, that bezel turns the, the mm-hmm. turns, it's uh, functional when you set the day, time, jumping, you know, jumping hours. So, uh, you know, GMT, obviously, um, it's really pretty easy to operate and sort of foolproof. Yeah. Very well, cool let's, let's skip on to the uh, the one one of the watches you wear Tuesday, which is uh, the Speedmaster Tintin. Yeah, lovely watch. Another Beautiful. one I just thought was uh, out there. You know, I hadn't seen a dial like this uh, elsewhere. 
you guys probably know uh, the, the chat, you know, everybody watching probably knows, you know, four, five, four years ago, five years ago, you know, you could buy these, you know, I think Fed, uh, Federico talks about going into a Costco or a Sam's Club or something and finding one, mm -hmm. you know, you could, you could get these really, really cheap. They have, you know, this has gone up 4X from what I paid for it. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't matter, you know, it's not leaving my collection. I, uh, well, you know, I, lo I love the watch. I think it's a cleaner layout. I think, you know, so Bill, you, you know, I'm with you. I do not, I am not a big fan. I've owned one or two skeleton dial watches, but I too, one of the first things that has to happen on a watch for me to buy it is I got to be able to read the time. Mm -hmm. This one, yeah. a, a chronograph, but look how crisp the, you know, it's just easy to, easy to read the time. And it's just something a little bit different. The bracelet on this Speedmaster is, uh, really super comfortable i i think it's a i think it's a great watch i love this watch yeah it's really nice really really nice i just love that pattern going around the dial a tintin pattern yep. i think it's it's gorgeous really yeah. nice all right so we'll leave that move on a chopic wow yeah, the Croix de Berge Guilchet Ricochet. Wow, that's a mouthful. Yeah. Tell us about wow. this one, Rick. So um, here's a watch that I was absolutely influenced on, uh, a brand I knew nothing about. It's a it's a restart, like a lot of the historical brands. I mean, Chopek and Patek were partners, you know, way back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is a, a brand that was restarted by, you know, a couple of investors. In in complete transparency, I am a shareholder in the company. You know, along with a couple other people um, that are active in the groups. So, um, you know, I, uh, uh, that that happened after I owned, after I owned this watch. But um, boy, you know, the, the one comment I'll make here, we won't spend a lot of time on it. But boy, in uh, a couple of the groups, there's just been for the last three weeks or so, there has been a marathon discussion about Guilloche. And, yes. um, you know, this Guilloche, uh, if, you know, if we zoomed in on that watch, that is a, that this is engine turn, mm -hmm. uh, Rose engine turn, mm -hmm. Guilloche, you know, in these old historic uh, uh, machines that they acquired. And that is mm -hmm. really difficult to create that ricochet. They call it a ricochet Guilloche pattern. This watch, you know, I, could, I was able to customize. Uh, that's a gray dial with a brown leather strap. Uh, I'd say the one funky thing about this is, uh, you know, so the dial, the sub dial on the right serves dual purpose. Um, it's a power reserve and it's the day indicator. So how do you do that, Rick? Well, you got to wind it on Sunday. So you wind this watch every Sunday or if, if you if it's a Wednesday and you want to wind the watch, you wind it only until the the indicator on the left there on the on the right sub dial would go to wednesday um but you know other than that the movement on this watch i don't have a movement shop but the movement on this is just absolutely gorgeous beautiful watch. Oh, beautiful right. yeah uh, it's 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 funny yeah uh, your thoughts on this one bill um uh, you know it's funny i didn't realize that the uh, uh sub dial between four and five o'clock was um uh that was a power reserve indicator and the, the i <laughs> you can't set it to any day of the week you only have to set it to sunday well you can if it's wednesday you can just wind it to wednesday so um yeah wow. yeah I, I i've always liked that sub dial but i thought it was something else uh no that watch is uh you know the other thing I like about Chopek is the, the the really interesting colors they have, and mm -hmm. uh, they have a green one that I really like a lot. And uh, you know, I, I it it's it's a watch that um, has always been one that I've liked. I uh, I have nothing to say about it except, whoa, that's interesting about that subdial. <laughs> that's well about what what I can't help but notice is how impossibly thin, two things, how impossibly thin that minute hand is. Mm. Oh, yeah. And number two, despite this, how legible it is. Yes. Yes. And do you know why this is? Contrast. Contrast. 
Right, right. And, and you know, it's the, the thinness of that minute hand reminds me of the Rolf Lang that, uh, that um, Clyde and myself and, and Rick um, and, and Bill got to experience. Uh, but the, the one thing that that watch was lacking was contrast. It was, yep. you know, yeah. sil- silver, silver hands on a gray dial, and it, it, it just got lost and trying to yeah. tell the time on that. Uh, but the hands were incredibly thin and, and, and beautiful. Uh, but this watch is just uh, even thinner, you'll even see, thinner uh, and you can see it better. You'll, you'll see in the next picture and then one towards the end where I've got uh, a couple of other watches with amazingly thin hands here. This uh, you'll, you'll see this watch, exact same watch with a burgundy dial, a blue dial. They make a green stone production. You can still buy this. Uh, the brand, by the way, is doing phenomenal. They introduced a steel sports watch, you know, mm-hmm. about a year ago. They are sold out. They're backlogged, like like almost everybody right now, backlogged on production. It's been fun being part of this uh, sort of crowdfunding group that helped uh, launch this. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen longer term, but uh, you know, it's uh, it, it's fun to be involved in some of the design decisions and and movements. You know, this is a company they they don't really have an atelier. Uh, you know, they, 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 they work with a bunch of different companies. They're very transparent. Mm. If you go on and read about this watch or their steel sports watch, mm. uh, I've got another one, another, another chop act that I'll show at the end. And, and, uh, you know, they're very transparent about who their partners are and who they work with. So, you know, kind of a cool concept. Definitely. Definitely. All right. Um, so we move on <laughs> to the, the one of my favorite watch by this, uh, Lauren Ferry, a beautiful Ferrier. Galley Square in a blue dial. Oh, wow. Hmm. Look at this. Is that a blue or is that a blue? I think that's more of a blue. It's a blue. I think you're right, Clyde. Blue. Yeah. Stunning. The back of that watch is even more beautiful than the front, and I think the front is very beautiful. That's sort of a vertical, uh, vertical brushed linen type effect uh, dial. You know, Laurent Ferrier, sort of the same thing. They really work with a lot of people and then assemble their watches. But, um, you know, there's not one central manufacturing facility. The rub on this brand is that they're, you know, unlike, um, you know, the Mylans and with Moser and the mm-hmm. Gronfeld brothers and, and others that are connected with collectors, you know, Laurent doesn't speak English. He doesn't engage. His son is not really engaged much. I right. think they could be. They could be so much better if they would engage with collectors and and, and, I, and so. Yeah, I, I I agree, Rick. And and early on in in in, in our uh, in our show, we ha- we had a discussion um, about Laurent Ferrier and and the worry that a lot of collectors have is that once you know, God forbid, when, when he passes on, what what's going to happen to the company? Are they going to survive? <laughs> Um, because they are not backed by big money um, and or, or owned by a big conglomerate, and they're a bit of a they're a bit of a crap storm relative to. I think they've had four presidents in the past seven years, and and uh, you know they've changed U.S. distributors a couple of times. I you know I think they're great watchmakers. I don't know that they're I don't know that they are great business people, but beautiful watch. You know, so this is one that um, uh, you. Some of you may have seen me post on some groups, and it sold, and um, it did a little boomerang. It, it's back in my it's back in my possession. The buyer, uh, you know, saw something on it that I didn't see, and you know, in all fairness, I am all above board and all transparent. And he was right. Uh, he showed me some some uh, macro pictures, and I just said, "Look, if you're if you're not comfortable." package it up and send it right back to me. And mm-hmm. you know, it's, you know, that twinge when you sell a watch or trade in a watch and you're like, ah, a little bit of regret. And I had yep. that, this watch. So, you know, I, this one that came back and I'm kind of glad it did. And I think it's just going to. Uh, what, what metal is that made of? It's a steel. This is a steel watch. This is, I, I went to Cellini's and I was looking at some, cause I, I love the looks of these watches. I think they have some of the most just pure classic looks of any watch. But I found them to be very light, and that was the only. It just and the guy I was with was an attorney, and he he really liked them. But uh, they told us they said, "Well, if they're made out of gold or platinum, or a little heavier." Because I I I like the heft, 
and, and a watch. Uh, but these are these are really beautiful watches. You know the what the one that uh, Laurent Ferrier uh, has that I like the best is his um, regulator. I don't know why, but I just think that's the coolest watch. The other thing, the other thing, Bill, that he does that, that Laurent Ferrier does that I think is really you know and Laurent. I think most of you know Laurent Ferrier worked for uh, Paddock for years and years, decades. You know, right. many decades. Uh, but they do a few uh, world time watches with enamel uh that that will rival you know the the enamel on a on a paddock philippe so uh very 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 beautiful this is bill this is a light watch this is really super light super comfortable you know we'll see you know uh i i i maybe share that concern i bought this pre-owned so you know i'm in it at a at a decent price mm -hmm. um um, you know, I probably share that concern, you know, on what happens when Laurent passes away, his son Christian is involved in the business. My guess is they carry on, um, you know, but like a lot of things that could cause them, you know, scarcity and could cause them to go up in value too. So who mm -hmm. knows? Yeah. Well, Clyde and I will buy it when, uh, after he uh, passes <laughs> on to his rewards. So we're all there. Yeah. I can disagree with Ron, the, what Ron the Shrink says. I mean, the case is beautiful and the hands are gorgeous as well i mean i think i'm a, I'm a huge fan of this ring a little bit of a little bit of a cushion case i guess they call it or mm -hmm. some uh, yeah. gee, it looks a little little panerai look which is interesting yeah because, cushion uh, cushion case style so, yeah so, sorry, Thomas, but i you know i am not a panerai fan i will not have, i will not own a panerai but uh you know but it's interesting that some people make that some mm -hmm. people make that comparison so yeah yeah uh, a beautiful watch. Um, so we'll move on to the Keep next. On. Oh, what a what what a picture! Beautiful. What a beautiful reverso. Reverso tribute duo face with a gray dial. Wow, look at that. Mm. That's gorgeous. Ray. Don't really see this one posted anywhere uh, no. too often. Limited, you know, probably because it's a limited edition of a hundred pieces. You know, this is the trend that a lot of the brands are doing now. They're making these limited editions only available through their boutiques, not through an AD. I, you know, if I was a, if I was a JLC AD, multi-brand, multi-brand uh, AD carrying JLC, I'd be, I'd be irritated with what a lot of these brands are doing. I, you know, I, I think a lot of, you know, I live most of the year in Chicago, part of the year in Chicago. And, you know, there's a, Really well-known uh, multi-brand AD on Michigan Avenue uh, that carry, you know, Vacheron and JLC and Cartier, mm -hmm. and Panerai. So that, that you know, they're really big into into the Reachmont brands. Right across the street, you know, another another AD is opening a Vacheron standalone AD. And wow! Right down, the road, right down the road is a Cartier AD, and I, I don't know how these guys are going to survive. And they've been mm -hmm. around, you know multi-generational uh, uh, one location, you know, but heavy real estate on Michigan Avenue. Mm -hmm. So this watch, uh, again, fell in love with the dial, the, the, the guilloche on that right side on the, on the secondary side with the day night indicator is just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I will tell you, and you know, when people ask for advice on reversos, cause I've got a couple, I tell them you gotta try them on because right. uh, you know, it drives me a little nuts, but they make a whole, bunch of different case sizes, you will yep. see another reverso, this exact watch, uh, that, that's rose gold, not yellow gold, and you'll see the exact same thing with a blue dial coming up. And, you know, darn it, if the case size isn't a little a little bit different. Um, this is a little bigger, the other one's a little smaller. I like them both, you know, honestly, the smaller one probably fits a little bit better, uh -huh. uh, but, I, but uh, I love this watch. Right. That's, a, that's, an, that's a real Casafaliano uh, strap. Uh, so, um, you know, beautiful, beautiful looking strap on here as well. So only the best strap. Yeah. Only the finest strap from Casa Fagliano. Gorgeous. Uh, I love this watch, Rick, man. It is just amazing. Amazing. Beautiful. Uh, and, and like you said, not one that you're going to see, um, ever. <laughs> it's really, uh, really beautiful piece. Um, but we will I, move I love that along. Gray dial. I just love yeah, gray yeah, dial. yeah, yeah. It's just yeah, amazing. You don't, you don't see gray dials a lot, right? No. Yeah. You know about it. Uh, so uh, uh, one. I'm sorry. I, no, I that people don't talk about too much. They really have excellent movements. 
Um, they're, oh, I, yes. You don't hear, hear about all these things that are, you know, because they flip over, I guess. But they also, they, they were a movement maker before they became a watchmaker. Really love that, that company. Yes. Yeah, supplying sorry. almost. Sorry, supplying, go ahead. I'll be quiet. Supplying, no, no, no. Supplying so many, supplying so many people. Bill, I mean, so many different yeah. manufacturers bought movements off. Um, right. Je, je, je le coup. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, yeah. the watchmaker's watchmaker, as we all know. Yeah, absolutely. So, le leaving this lovely reverso, and we move uh, on to the first wow. patch of the day. The patch wow. five nine six zero. 1A. This wow. One. Oh, and this is the one. I have seen this one from a close, well, almost, the white dial. And I this have looked at the... that. I've looked at that. I've looked at that and looking at that, literally smudging my nose up like a kid in a, like a, like, I was going to say someone at a candy shop, but like, yeah. You know, we'll just say. Yeah, this, a, has the, the, this, has the, this has the ebony dial, doesn't it, Rick? Yeah. Yeah, so the white dial, you know, they still make the 5960. It's still in the catalog, but they've discontinued the, so this is steel, so steel paddock. Uh -huh. um, this watch was introduced, uh, I think, in 2017, and 10 months later, they discontinued both the black and the white. And the whites were selling at a discount to retail, like, uh -huh. you know, like a lot of non-sports paddocks. And, uh, you know, as soon as that happened, I went out and... Uh, got to my AD and really begged to be able to buy this watch. He wanted to sell me both the black and the white, and I just pushed hard enough really? and, yeah. and, and and you know kind of held my ground and I was able to buy the buy the black at uh, mm -hmm. at actually I, a little below retail. But this is a a steel paddock produced for less than ten months. I mean, this is going to yeah. be this is going to be wow. it's already worth double well, what I paid for it, but it's going to be worth a lot of money someday. Well, and, and, and likewise, I was looking, and again, I was aware of these facts that you're talking about. I was looking, well, again, looking at the white dial. I hated the white, I could not live with the white dial. Hated it. But I love it, I love it in black. So you look at the, you know, you, you joke about contrast, but look at the contrast and how readable this is. Yep. Flyback, flyback chronograph, super readable, loomed hands, red, yep. red uh, second hand, uh, you know, and then and then everything is down. You know, on one dial instead of having three, you know, three counters. You know, you've got it all right there. And for somebody who doesn't really use a chronograph much, I mean, that they jam all that down into one place. I love the look at the look at the date. The 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 yep. date one red. Only the only the first of the month is red. By the way, the, all the other all the other dates are are white. But it's so crisp. And I I like uh, uh, in paddock. I happen to like the window indicators as opposed to the dial indicators you know so some watches where they've right. got the Interesting. round mm. love this watch yeah i'll tell you what mm. i don't like i i, I find the I, it's a, I find the steel bracelet to be a little um uh you know a little miami a little blingy a little blingy for me but yeah uh, a little bit too much and i've tried to i've tried to talk to my ad and they will not uh they they will not order a paddock strap i would have to do aftermarket and i'm probably just not going to mess with it so yeah, yeah I wear it. let it be rick it, it, it it's it's stunning yeah. as it is it doesn't need uh anything else and i just wanted to welcome in uh id guy uh, uh welcome my friend you, you've missed some beautiful watches but we've welcome, got id guy we got yeah. a lot more ahead of us so buckle in and and enjoy rick, it i'm throwing this out there maybe you could just get a nautilus and just change the bracelets yeah you know, so funny story on this watch. I mean, this is a little bit of a tragic situation relative to watch uh, watch values. But I, uh, prior to owning this, I owned a uh, from the same AD. I owned a Nautilus fifty nine ninety. So that's the dual time chronograph mm -hmm. mm -hmm. nine ninety, right. which mm -hmm. uh, which I ended up selling to fund the purchase of this. And um, Boy, you know, value of fifty nine nineties right now are like crazy expensive. So you know, astronomical. Yeah. Yeah. Ouch. All right. So we'll move wow, on from this so, stunning yeah. paddock. Mm. Back into speedy to territory. Lovely this is speedy. This one. This is the moon phase professional. Oh my god, speedmaster professional moon phase moon watts. 
Adventuring Dial. I love phone. this. Adventuring Dial. It's amazing. So talk about being influenced by YouTube. Uh, I purchased this watch from Watchbox after seeing a Tim Mosso review of this watch. And I just fell in love with that dial. And, uh, you know, let's be fooled. Watchbox is in the, you know, Tim's there to sell watches. So right. uh, it works. That's his yeah. main job. Sure. It's, not sure. the only, it's not the only watch I've bought but from Watchbox because of a Tim Mosso or from others because of a Tim Mosso review or uh, from other influence. But uh, 44 and a quarter. So it's a little big. This is another mm -hmm. watch that... Uh, I actually have posted for sale on Chrono 24 right now, only because you'll see I've got, you know, it's like how many how many Speedmasters does somebody need? Um, this watch is rare. Uh, there's not a lot of them out there. I'm on uh, I'm on Chrono 24 at like 14 grand. The next cheapest one is 18 or 19. So um, really great looking watch. Runs like a charm. Beautiful adventuring dial. Uh, mm -hmm. Beautiful looking watch. Yeah, really nice. Yeah, that dial, that dial is just gorgeous. The adventuring dial. I mean, it's, I've never seen that on a Speedmaster before. No, me neither. Me neither. Really nice. All right. So we'll move on from this Speedy. From one Speedy to, to the another next. Omega. Another yeah. Speedy. Gray side of the moon, this one. Gray side of the moon. Yeah. Classic watch, you know. Um, Relatively common, I think. You know, there's a lot of these out there. This is still current catalog. You can go into an Omega boutique or an AD and buy this watch. Uh, ceramic case, super light, uh, wears really, really well. This, too, um, just recently left my collection. I sold it to a fellow Chicago-based collector. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, again, probably no other reason other than, you know, if I had regrets i could go and repurchase the watch pretty easily it's not uh it's not anything that is that is super super rare so it was one of the more common watches i had and that kind of drove the decision uh to, to lighten up but i will tell you these uh, the gray side of the moon they make a, a dark side of the moon i think there's a blue side of the moon I, mm -hmm. you know they're super com these are big watches too but they wear they wear so light and so comfortable right. um i think they're i think they're great watches I was going to say, yeah. Rick, how do you find the ceramic? How do you find the ceramic cases compared to the normal Speedmasters? Do, do, do they are they nice to wear? Yeah, I enjoyed it, you know, and I found that I would wear something like this, you know, when I'm doing a little more, you know, rugged activity or mm -hmm. you know. Something. The 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 uh, what I've heard is that the ceramic stays cool on your wrist. Yep. It doesn't heat up like a steel watch. Yep. Right. And right. Super light, super light, and I. You guys probably know more than me, but my understanding is these are like super scratch resistant. So buying one pre-owned, it's going to look pristine. I guess the downside is, you know, that um, they are prone to, you know, like if you dropped it, you'd be mm -hmm. screwed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we'll leave the gray side of the moon. And a fantastic ah. Roger Dubois. Wow. Yeah. Roger Dubois, the symphony. Wow, nah, we, we we just we just hit a chord with Bill. <laughs> yeah, you did. As a matter of fact, yeah, that's on my list. Um, you know, it it's funny. The older Roger Debris, I like a lot. The new ones, they they're all skeletonized, and they just they're not. I don't like them at all. But but the older ones, like this one, is just this is just beautiful and um they're different and a lot of people think yeah they don't like it because it's different well you know the heck with them uh to me this is this is a this is a watch i'd really like to have and if i ever run into one that uh is uh the person is looking the other way uh i may get one so <laughs> no i really like this watch it, the movement. This has got the Geneva seal too. I think is that right, uh, Rick? Yeah, Geneva Geneva seal, full box and papers, fully serviced. Right before I purchased it uh, by Roger Dubuis, I personally think it's a travesty what Reachmont has done with this brand. If they would just stop and go back to some of the classic designs, I mean, the brand is almost unrecognizable. Uh, yeah. To its origins, you know the, the the watches of of you know 15, 20, 25 years ago, and I guess there's some controversy about you know Roger Dubuis might not have been you know that great of a 
you know, th that nice of a, a of a person and uh, who was his partner in the brand? I forget the guy's name, but he was really the brains behind the operation and the business. Oh, uh, Diaz or somebody like that, I yep. think. Yep. I'm, yep. I'm not sure his name. He did. He was a jerk. I heard. And because uh, uh, Roger Dubuis and uh, Jean-Marc Viderec used to work together at, of all places, Harry Winston. And uh, <laughs> Dubuis made the perpetual motion part, and uh, Jean-Marc Viderec worked on a retrograde. And so, you know, they have some of the watches coming out during this little bubble when both of those guys were there working on them. There's some pictures that I have of uh, the two together. I, I've been in a lot of contact with uh, Nicholas uh, Viderek, uh, one of the two sons of Jean-Marc, and I, and I had some pictures of them when they were kids. And so there's a, I think there's a lot more connection between those two guys than uh, a lot of people realize. And his the movement, the RD-14, it's on my Easy Diver. It's just, it's a beautiful movement. I was wearing it today. And it was, yeah, no, I, I, I cannot say anything but good things and wish I had one. That's a nice watch. Yeah, really this was, this was uh This was influenced by a Brian Govberg video. He had a uh, bi-retrograde symphony. And I just thought the case shape, now look at the crystal. So you look at the case shape, but think about think about the work involved in creating that crystal. And then I get a lot of comments when I post as well. You better not ever damage that crystal. Fortunately, when yeah. I bought the watch, it came, it came with an extra crystal. And really, oh, really, yeah. Oh, and really? Roger is still in Roger is still in business. And you know, if I had issues, they'd be able to you know they'd be able to to repair it. But uh, beautiful, beautiful watch to be able to get this with full box and papers. I am not. Uh, I am not the world's biggest vintage person. I guess this is sort of, I've got one other debris that I think falls into that vintage category. But I just, you know, a, a theme again that you'll see different case shape, different look. Mm -hmm. I, really, I saw one yeah. watch, like I saw this exact watch posted on European watch, maybe European watch company in Boston about six months ago at about, I don't know, eight or nine times what I paid for this. So it's, you know, timing is everything. Really? In this I mean, you know, so I hit it. I hit it right on this one. Yeah, stunning, stunning, beautiful, and Brilliant. and you know that K shape is just so unique, and um, there's nothing else like it. Love this watch. And another awesome oh, paddock. Your next, your next Patek Philippe, the fifty five twenty four G Travel Time. Great watch. I love this pilot's watch. Yeah. One of my favorite. I guess when these came out, uh, and I don't really remember, I probably wasn't too into collecting or paying attention at that point in time, but these were kind of controversial because they were sort of non Patek Philippe like when they came yeah. out. Uh -huh. But I, I, you know, to me, just personal preference, but you know, there's all kinds of different dual time watches, you know, with I like. So look at the look at the two hands, the skeletonized hour hand and the solid mm -hmm. hour hand. I like a dual time watch like that as opposed to a GMT with, right. you know, uh, like on a Rolex GMT where, it, you know, it's just harder to, it's harder to tell the, 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 the time on, for me on a GMT versus something like this. So I've got two watches like this. You'll see a Vacheron uh, that has the skeletonized dial as well. I wear this watch all the time. I, I, I posted a while back, this watch went away for about a year, mm -hmm. 30, 38 weeks, it just stopped working. It just, it wouldn't hold its power reserve. And then finally it became really sticky to wind it. All of you know that when you have a watch and you're setting the time and all of a sudden something doesn't feel right, you gotta get it, you gotta get it serviced. Don't don't mess with mm -hmm. it. But went in for service, it was expensive. And this is not that complicated of a watch, right? I mean, this were, this is a, uh, you know, real time watch uh, with the home and local indicators, but you know, it was a, it was a, it was an expensive, that was a just under $2,000 repair. Um, and, and Patek, you know, they, they do irritate me because they've got a, one of the worst warranties in the business where everybody else has gone to five, six, seven years, JLC is seven years. I think mm -hmm. Patek is still, is still two years. This was, you know, a year out of warranty. And, uh, mm. but nonetheless, I love the watch. Uh, this is like my, like my uh, Skydweller and my Vacheron overseas, this is one that gets a ton of wrist time. I love this watch. Yeah, is, I don't, is this I don't, the, uh, the one they call the pilot watch or at one time? 
Yeah, yeah they, uh, uh, the Kala Trava pilot or something like that. Pilot travel time. Yep. I really like this. I, I it's I, I'm I have trouble with black dials primarily because of uh, they put stupid colors on there and it's hard to see. But this one is really clear as a bell, and I'm a big fan of hand dates. And I have no watch with a hand date, but I really like them, and I like this watch a lot. Yeah, it, it's really it, <clears throat> the the feature that you were mentioning, Rick, that I like the best about this watch is that you know you can hide that second time zone hand uh, and when you don't want it, and then you know set it when you do want to use it. So. Uh, it, 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 it's such a cool watch. Such yeah, a cool watch. Absolutely, great feature with the that that dual hand function. Yeah, I my, big, I to, uh, my big decision on this watch was uh, this color. You know, the 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 white gold version, or they make a rose gold uh, version with a slightly different color, more of a brownish type dial. I think that goes a little dressy. This one a little more sporty. I don't think you could go wrong with either. I think they're both beautiful watches. Uh, happy, happy. I own this watch. I don't blame you. All right. So on to the other watch that you say you wear a lot, the Vacheron Constantine Overseas Dual Time. Is this the one you say you wear a lot? I do, and uh, I think you all know that uh, the, the Generation 3 Overseas, I think it's a really cool package on how they do these. It comes with mm -hmm. a quick release strap you in in you get a steel bracelet a rubber strap and a leather strap and in about Brilliant. less than a minute, you can change you can change out and swap yeah. it's like it's like having three watches in one look at the hour hand at five o'clock if you look closely there's a little bit of a red arrow under there that too is a dual time so you can just switch keep the watch running mm -hmm. uh and uh, switch the time to the time zone that you're in. Sort of the same look and feel, but a little more versatile because it's, uh, you know, I, I, I'd wear this over the paddock in weather like I'm in right now. You know, it's 100 degrees out here in the desert. And, um, you know, I would wear this over, over something on a leather strap in this kind of heat. Uh, great watch. Um, not the most popular dial color, that silver dial. Blue is, uh, blue seems to be the, the, the go-to color, but I've got a lot of blue dial watches. So I purposely uh, went and acquired this, uh, bought this before Vacheron uh, really took off. These have gone, you know, they're, they're selling pre-owned at retail or slightly above retail right now. I got this way below, way below retail and uh, just love it. Uh, great, great watch. Great watch. Yeah. And I, I love the dual time uh, hand on the uh, nine o'clock. I mean, uh, I remember ID guy doing a uh, video on the Corey Richards um, version, and uh, it's it's stunning watch. It's beautiful. I, I, I've never seen it in a silver dial like this, but this is this, this is a gorgeous dial, Rick. I don't yeah, understand why they don't why they don't come out with that Corey Richards watch as a uh, or some variant of it as a. I standard. agree, because it's a stunner. I would buy it that. Is. Yeah, right. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, what what a great watch and, and and a great value like you like you were saying you know you, it's so versatile you get the you get the uh, you know the bracelet and the, and and the strap and it, it's it's just yeah as Chad was saying yeah the, the overseas it, has always been one of my favorite watches just and I like the ones that came out in 2016 with the 5100 dial I mean uh, movement. I called uh, the Vessel and Content 10 uh, Boutique in New York the other day, and they're totally sold out of overseas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're all gone. Yeah, I'm, I'm with good reason because they're amazing yeah. watches. And it wasn't too long. Oh, I don't know. They're nice watches, but resale sucks. Retail sucks. You're an idiot if you buy one of those. You're right. stupid if you buy. No, I'm not going to say anything. I, I'm not bitter or anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> and so, now you're on a waiting list. You know, now if you want to jump on the bandwagon, you're on a waiting list to get one. So, yeah. You know what, do you know what I like about this watch in particular? What's that? Contrast. There you go. Yeah, absolutely, Clive. Yeah. It's just it's like, look. all over. Yeah. Cover it. Yeah. Pit. Yeah. Edge the edge the hands in black, guys. Um, yeah. Yep. Is that so? Yeah. Is that so effing hard to do, Rolex? Really? 
<laughs> I'm telling you, I gotta be able to read the time on a watch, you know. Yep. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. All right. So from so one next, stunner we've to had, the next. We've, we've, we've had wow. two so far. We, we move wow. on to your third John, the Octo Calendar with Black Mother per Dow. This is stunning. Right, I'm gonna step away real quick. I've got to change my pants. <laughs> <laughs> So this looks like a really early show on this one. You know, yeah, I, I knew I shouldn't have had that high fiber breakfast before reviewing this watch collection. And, and looking back, it was just a serious mistake. Is this a brass movement, Jorn, uh, Rick? It is not brass movement, but it is uh, the, the calendar is discontinued. It is 38 mil millimeter. That is discontinued. And this mm -hmm. black mother of pearl dial was made in a series of 10 watches for Singapore AD, Ten. sincere fine watches. Wow. I can't even estimate what this watch is worth today. I mean, I have no wow. idea. Uh, ten, one of 10, Black Mother of Pearl. Wow. Now, I will tell you, in most lights, you know, I took that in a, in full sunlight. In many lights, it looks, uh, you know, black, gray, you know, a little bit of gold fleck. Hard to actually see Black Mother of Pearl. But mm -hmm. um, uh, full box and papers, um, you know, I, I didn't, I honestly didn't buy this in Singapore myself. I bought this pre-owned before the, before the Jorn craze. You know, Jorn just introduced a couple of weeks ago, they introduced an anniversary, I forget which watch, but a, a 10th anniversary watch or something. And somebody was saying, oh, Rick will, you know, Rick will end up uh, being able to get one of those. I am, yeah, I own five, 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 I think five Jorn watches. I am not worthy. I am not at that level. There are so many people that are so into Jorn, way above me, way above us, that even even with what I have, I'm 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 not at any level where I have any sway with the brand. I've met Francois Paul a couple of times. He's um, yeah, he's kind of an ass. Uh, honestly, he's kind of a jerk. Uh, so uh, you know. Um, so, you know, not engaging where you meet an Edward Milan or the Gronfeld brothers, they like to have a beer and like to have fun. Right. Uh, you know, it's just not the case with, uh, with FP, but I did meet, um, I, I did, uh, I was in Geneva a couple of years ago. I was able to spend a day at the, uh, at the, at, at the, at the manufacturer. And, uh, you know, I was able to meet the watchmaker that made that, um, Octa Calendre, the, the, or the, the Octa Havana, uh, automatic that I have. So young guy, you know, young watchmaker. So you can, you know, if you're there and the watchmaker that made your watch is actually there, they can look at the number and they can tell who made the watch. But I, you know, this watch, you know, you know probably going to keep this forever, but I am really, really yeah. curious. Everything that's happened in the auction market, what the value of this thing would be. Mm. One of one of only 10 in the world. Congratulations. I just wanted, wow. just wanted to ask you, Rick, about, about FP, your FP joint. How have you found them with um, um, getting them serviced? Have you had to have any of them serviced? Because I was listening to someone the other day, and they were saying that uh, with high brand watches, Vutelainen, for example, he's never had to have his service, but his FP Jeans, he, he's had to have all of them serviced quite a lot. Have you found you've had to have them, any of yours serviced? So, so this watch in particular is uh, very finicky. That's why, as I understand it, that's why they discontinued the calendar. Mm -hmm. it's very, you know, it's a retrograde calendar. You know, it goes one to thirty-one, and then the ret the, the 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 dial swings back to one, and uh, and then you've got uh, uh, the month and the day there in the windows, and it's a little bit of a finicky watch. And actually, when I bought this watch. Um, you know, it started jumping. I couldn't get it set right. It started jumping every couple of days. It would go from, you know, from, from Thursday to Saturday. And it was just mm -hmm. impossible. I, so really? I sent it in. I sent it in. They took care of it. No charge. Uh, and sent it back. And it's been working great for a couple of years now. No issues at all. Great. Great. Yeah. I sent both of my uh, FP Jorns into the, uh, the U.S. service place in Miami. And one was... Um, the residents and I, I asked him. I said, "Look, you know, you can guys can go ahead and send it to Geneva if you don't have somebody there who can deal with that." And I said, "No problem if it takes longer." 
And uh, they said, no, 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 we'll do it. And then they had a hurricane, but that's another story. The, uh, <laughs> but they, they did a really good job on both my uh, Chronomet Surveying and my um, uh, Resonance. So mm -hmm. I'd have no problem with that. But Rick, I've, I, there's a group that I was talking to at one time and somebody had, he was telling me he has all of these boxes from uh, F.P. Jorn's service because he had to keep sending his watch back. And I think that he had whatever model he had. Um, I don't even know whether they have it anymore or not, but uh, he had a lot of problems with it too, even after he sent it in. So it's, you know, it, it does happen even with the best. Yeah. Let's move along. Interesting. Sure. Yeah, so this is a sec the second reverso you're talking uh, about. The, uh, the reverso. I like this one even better than the first one. This <laughs> is a tri the tribute to your face, Fagliano Limited Edition, with a blue dial. This is a gorgeous one. Same watch, slightly smaller, limited edition of 100. Uh, went into the JLC boutique in... New York on a trip just to say hi to, you know, the, the manager and the person that I dealt with there. And they had this, I think it was the last one in the world that was there. So of course I had to, I had to get it. Uh, I actually, you know, I like both of the reversos. I like this one. I like this one better. It is slightly smaller, fits a little better. I won't spend a lot of time on this. We, you know, we, we now, when you buy these watches, do they do an elaborate song and dance routine like Charlie and the chocolate factory? <laughs> <laughs> I like this one more because it's got the tribute dial. Well, I prefer the Agreed. tribute dial than the gray dial. To, Agreed. To be honest with you, beautiful, beautiful watch. Real quick story. Um, you know, when I went to Geneva, uh, my wife bought a trip to celebrate my 60th birthday a couple of years mm -hmm. ago. We did a week in Geneva playing watch tourist and then a week up in the Swiss Alps in a place called Zermatt skiing. Um, but um, the two days before we're leaving for Geneva to fly over, I get a call from my contact at the JLC boutique in New York. And she said, Hey, what are your, you know, what hotel are you staying at? And what are your, you know, what are all your arrangements? Uh, yeah, you know, we were getting a, we'd prearranged a, a kind of VIP tour of the uh, JLC manufacturer in La Centier. And, um, you know, we just figured we'd uh, drive up there or somebody would drive us up there. She flew over from New York to take us personally on this factory tour of JLC. Wow. And flew back wow. the next day. That's when you know you're spending too much money. And wow. but I spend way less on the value of all my other than one that you're gonna see way at the end, the value of all my JLC watches doesn't even come close to one of the other watch, you know, from a, a, a Jorn or you know, some of the paddocks. I sure they're not most of these watches aren't, you know, crazy, crazy, crazy expensive. But that I think that's a, a little bit of where the watch world is going, you know, for, for collectors and you know. Uh, you know, they're going to have to do more special type things. So, but it, it shocked me that she would fly over, uh, to maybe tells you a little bit about the margin in, uh, in wristwatches. You got the duty Robson treatment in other words. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just what a, what a stunning, stunning watch. Stunning. And what a great story. Yeah, I love that blue dial. I, yeah, go uh, it, it's cool. Yeah. All right. So we move, so we'll move, move on, on to your the first Langer oh, of, the, uh, man. of the day, <laughs> the Langer's on Grand Langer 1, 25th uh, anniversary. This is one of uh, 25 watches. Uh, uh, one of 25 limited, this one. Amazing, yeah. Rick. So if you remember, two years ago, I think, was the 25th anniversary of the Langer 1. And every month they came out with a different edition. They started with, a, I think, 250 copies of the standard Langer 1, the 38 and a half millimeter with the hundred case back, and then they had the Daymatic and the Lang One Moon Phase, and then the Grand Lange One, and they had you know just all the different all the different versions. Um, and you know, I checked in with the Lange Boutique in New York uh, time after time, boutique only, obviously. Twenty five worldwide on these, other than the very first one, and you know. I got the call and I had like an hour to decide on whether I wanted this watch or not. And I actually, I owned a longer one, so I knew how it fit. I had a blue dial, I forget the reference number, but I had a blue dial, uh, uh, white gold blue dial longer one in the 38 and a half millimeter size. And I actually, I think these are 40.5, 40.5. 
40.5. And I actually think this size wears better on me. And uh, so I pulled the trigger on this and it is uh, the engraved, the balance cock is engraved with a 25 on the back. The finishing on all longer watches is amazing. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. special, very, very special watch. I just, I love the- it Really love is, the, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's just, just know, it's one it's, it's one one stunner after another, Rick. I, I mean, <laughs> the 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 Langa one. It's it's not my favorite Langa, but but this one just it it pops and it it it's balanced and it just it, it just works. It, it just works. It's so beautiful. Really is, Rick. Yeah, you know, stunning. You get time at a glance and a gorgeous looking movement. Yeah, I yeah. like this. Yeah, it is. There's nothing, not nothing, nothing not, not to like. Uh, just be truly beautiful. All right. So on to your fourth FB uh, John. Oh FB my! John Optimum. That's it. Oh, uh, Galate Ribbon Twardy Galate. Mm, I love this watch. You've got Bill going now. Mm. You've got Bill going now. It's a Remontoir. He loves his Remontoirs. So. Yeah, tell us about this one, Rick. So uh, I think I think Francois Paul believes that this is his most accurate watch. Uh, again, uh, Roman Par, the, the Optimum. The uh, I always get confused between the the boutique only and the uh, the black, uh, but I think I think this is a boutique only um, version. I bought this before. Again, I, I'm sort of probably priced out of the, the Dorn market, uh, you know, like everybody else these days. So I bought this you know, a couple of years ago before the, the crazy Phillips auction when everything went, uh, went nuts. Beautiful watch, great size, love the color combination of the, the, the black, the white, uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the white, the, the strap on this watch, I think just goes perfectly with the rose gold case. I mean, I, it's, uh, I think it's an absolute stunner. Yeah. What has this one got, Rancher? I think it's a C word. Contrast. Con it's, it's got contrast. That's all it's got. Yeah. <laughs> he's oh, he's got contrast. <laughs> sorry, um, I was overtaken by the watch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This, I, this, this, I like this, this watch better than the one with the rim and toi. The, there's another one. I forgot the name of it. Uh, but the Optimum has the Remontoir Egalité, and then he has one with the Remontoir Egalité and with a, uh, uh, a Tourbillon. And the reason I like this one better, I, the reason I like Rick's better, is that you can you can see the difference that the Remontoir makes. Uh, and so you don't have to wonder, well, is that the Tourbillon or is that the Remontoir? And that's why I like it so much. On, it, on the new Resonance, they have both the Remontois plus the Resonance, and, and I have no idea what he why he did that. But uh, yeah, this watch is is one of my very 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 favorite FB yarns. Yeah, I, I I mean Rick, congratulations because this is just yeah stunning. It's, it's unbelievable, it? uh, an unbelievable watch. It really is. Yeah. Wow. All right. So as gorgeous as this is, we'll move on. Wow. On to my favorite Patek that you own, uh, Rick. Yeah, this is my favorite one in your collection, the 521211A, the uh, weekly calendar. This is just gorgeous. It's pretty hard to come by, too. And I'll tell you, when this was introduced at, uh, you know, Basel World or, you know, whatever it was at the time, it, I was sort of like, hmm, you know, weekly calendar, you know. Those of us in the U.S. don't really use, you know, week numbers for much of anything. But then I started reading about the story of the hand script and, you know, how they how they, uh, you know, modeled this after uh, somebody who hand wrote all these numbers so intricately. And, um, you know, it's just a steel Patek Philippe, uh, complicated steel Patek Philippe that wears great. I've got a couple of different straps. I just picked up last week a mm -hmm. blue uh Patek Philippe strap that I'm gonna oh put nice on. and you'll have to you'll see some pictures of that uh probably in a week or two when I when I when I get back and I post that. Uh but I you know just wears great 40 
40, 40, 39, 40 millimeters, standard size. It's a really, really, really wears great from a size standpoint. Fun mm -hmm. watch, different, not like anything else. I, I just think this watch doesn't look like anything else that you see from anybody. Yeah, yeah this is my favorite uh, Patek Philippe too, especially with this story about how they got the dial. And there's something about it that is so fresh and so unique. It's And it's, it's a fun watch. Just more fun to have that on your wrist. That's a cool watch, Rick. Thanks. Yeah, yeah to really totally is, uh, unique, and uh, you know, just uh, you know, it's just so cool. <laughs> I'm starting yeah, out, I run out, run out, running out of things to say, but this is just another cool. Watch. I love it. Well, just the fact that it's a steel watch as well. It's mm -hmm. a steel Patek, and it, it's it's it, you know, it's got that fascinating calendar on it with the points of the day, and just. It's, it's I love it. It's just brilliant. Congratulations, yeah. Drake. It really, really is a beautiful watch as well. Thank you. It. All right. So yeah. I'll leave what? this. You've beauty. got multiple texts, but I can tell them all apart. Right. <laughs> so a I'll lovely Zenith El Primero. El, the El Primero A386 revival, this one. This is a back down to earth a bit more, this one. Yeah, so this is, uh, you know, I think Zenith has really done a really good job on their revival stuff over the last They're couple of years. They're knocking it out of the park, aren't they? Aren't they? they are. Yeah. 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 I, like, I, like, I like them all. I mean, I like I like them all. And, you know, the A384, A385, A386, you'll see I've got a CoverGirl revival coming up. This was made, and, you know, they, they did another watch just recently. I think the, I think ID Guy did a, a video on it and some others on the, I think it's an A385 with kind of a tobacco type dial, but this was done for. Yes, the cappuccino little, dial. Yeah, the cappuccino dial. But this has got a similar look with the tricolor sub dials. Um, and it was done in a limited number, I think maybe 14 or 20 copies, part of a group I'm in called the Fine Watch Club. And, um, you know, these are, I don't know, what, somebody can correct me. I think these are 37 and a half or 38 millimeters. So, you know, mm -hmm. sort of at the bottom end of size range that, but it wears great. Just look at that sit on my wrist. It sits on my wrist just great. Super legible. Very, mm -hmm. you know, loomed, loomed indices, loomed hands. Just a great watch. And I fell in love with the distinctive dial. I mean, I think that's kind of a yeah. classic El Primero look. Yep. For, this for is, sure. Uh, this watch addresses everything I don't like about uh, chronographs. I do like this one. And the reason I like it, at a glance, because they use different colored subdials, it's so much easier to see what's going on. Uh, you know, yes. I, the ones I have, they just they, they seem to put everything except the kitchen sink on the dial. And you look at it, there's just, you know, a bunch of noise. But this one I really like. And I like Zenith, too. Oh, and I another did. thing, too. I like the 4:30 uh, positioning of the date. I was just going to say that, Bill. That you, you and I are one of the few fans of the date at 4:30. I love yeah. that. Yeah, nothing I else happens well. at 4:30. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you, Bill. The, the tricolor subdials are so much more <laughs> definable. You, you can really see, you can see much more than you can on a normal tri register. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, I love this watch. Mm. Mm. Really nice, really yeah, so nice. Thirty thirty-eight and a half millimeters. So you know, mm -hmm. pretty classic, pretty classic size. And you'll see on the next watch. I only own two El Primeros, two Zeniths. The next one is the Cover Girl Revival. The different case shape. So this is the uh, A thirty-eight. We've got the three eight one eight Revival. The Cover Girl, isn't it? The next one. Oh man. Oh. Beautiful Look at that blue. Oh man, love that K shape. Yeah. Look at the, bra the 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 bracelet. That and this yeah. this came this came with a uh, strap and bracelet both. That's a Gay Foray, I guess, is the designer bracelet. He was the original bracelet. They call it the Cover Girl because you know the classic Zenith El Primero book. This is on the cover, and that's why they call it the Cover Girl. That's the nickname of the watch. But mm -hmm. um, right. I was sitting, this is a COVID, this is a COVID purchase, as I recall. So like last, uh, 
February or something, and March, maybe early March, and sitting around, and this gets introduced by Revolution Watch. It was done in conjunction with Revolution Magazine. Mm -hmm. And um, I go on, and it's sold out, and, you know, I don't know, for whatever reason, I threw my name in there, you know, say, on the wait list. You know, three or four hours later, I think somebody must have canceled because of what was going on with COVID and the world was ending and everything else. And I get an email, you know, we have a watch if you'd like to purchase it. And boom, boom, boom. You know, I got it. And a, couple <laughs> weeks, a week or two later, I, I get the watch and I just fell in love with this. I, I wear this right. a lot. I, love, I don't blame you. I, don't I, don't, blame I love you. that K shape. I love that color. I, I, I love everything about this watch. Wow. Yeah. What a stunner. I, I think your COVID experience was a little bit better than mine was. Oh, yeah, for sure. Rancher. That's an understatement there, Rancher. I saw yeah, somebody I'm... post on Instagram yesterday an original uh, of this, uh, mm -hmm. and it, it looks identical. I mean, you know, mm. beautiful. But but yeah. somebody, somebody was able, a collector was able to purchase, you know, this somebody was able to purchase one of the original Zenith Cover Girls, and it's just a beautiful, looks great. Mm. Right. I love this yeah. shape. I'm listing after I'm listing mm. after one of these as well, an A384. They're just gorgeous. Yeah, I just want to warn everybody, as Brent was saying, I, I don't think we're going to go, um, and I don't want to go that long to uh, ID Guy territory streams, but we're at about the halfway point. So um, we'll try to be quick. Re re refill your beverage and uh, and your sn and your snack bowl, and uh, we're going to keep on going. Um, man, I love this zenith mm. and a Pepsi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. DMT Master Two Pepsi. Colin Winding Watches has got one of these, haven't you, Colin? He loves it. Congratulations! You've yeah. actually managed to make the Pepsi look humdrum in order. <laughs> 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 After watching these other ones, oh, here's a Pepsi. And I was like, uh, uh, whatever. <laughs> it's just, it's just a Pepsi, right? 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 Exactly. Uh, for the right, sake right. of time, we don't need to spend a lot of time. It's obviously a, a well-known, a well-known watch. I actually, so I am. I, I don't like. I don't love all Rolex, you know. So uh, we'll get into something else, and I'll talk about it later. But I, this is one I like. I think it's a classic look. Super comfortable. Mm -hmm. Love wearing it. You know, uh, we can we can move along. Great all right. Moving on to an MBNF emergency, the LM one. This is fifty ounces in cosmic green. Yeah, this is the okay. Brace just my mic, my microphone, because I'm going to be doing this for about twenty minutes. Two manufacturers collaborate. Manufacturers collaborate. The MBNF and see, this is a gorgeous watch trick. This is a how did you how did you manage to come by this one? So MBNF and Moser, um, you know, did a collaboration, and there was a there was a Moser piece that 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 Moser did, and this is obviously an MBNF LM 101 with a Moser dial, and they did it in four different colors, 15 pieces of each. This is one of 15 in the Moser Cosmic Green. Uh, COVID again, I think maybe March or April, and sitting around. There are a lot of people in the watch community, a lot of people on this chat that knew that something was coming out on a collab between Moser and, <sighs> and I was not one of them. I had zero clue. I knew nothing about it, but this pops up, I'm sitting at home in the morning. I, you know, instead of contacting an AD or anything else, I go to mbnf.com and I look and they've got, the other colors are sold out. They've got this available. And I wow. this. Wow. An, hour later, an hour later, the worldwide sales director from MBNF calls me from from Geneva mm -hmm. and said, "Well, congratulations. We just wanted to understand you are the first person in the world that has purchased a watch online on our online watch shop." You know, wow. Really? And talking about wow. being uh, yeah. at the right place at the right time. Uh, you know, that, that, that takes the cake, Rick. Yeah. So funny story because we need to move along, but funny short story on this uh about a month ago i get a call from mbnf uh and they say hey we've got a collector who really uh, you know a brand enthusiast of ours who really 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 wants uh the watch that you have would you ever consider selling the watch and i'm like well you know there's a price for everything so uh you know and i actually hadn't worn this watch it's uh you know uh, Big, that, that, you can't see it in this picture. That's a big dome. 
the the right. the, the yeah. Moser ver the Moser version is even a higher dome, really an un almost an unwearable watch. Um, but um, I thought, well, sure, you know, I'd, I'd be I'd be open to doing that. So we went back and forth, and they ended up, you know, agreeing to buy it back at a at a very handsome premium. And then, you know, but but the watch was sitting in Chicago. I was in Florida for a couple of months, and I said, but I can't get to the watch until you know April first when I'm back. And uh, then I get back and I check in with them and, you know, turns out the guy had changed his mind and, you know, the, the whole deal fell apart. But that's pretty mm -hmm. interesting that it developed. And what the, the deal that I worked out is, yeah, I'll, I'll sell it back to you. But um, I want uh, I want, uh, you know, first priority on future releases. There's a lot of right. stuff that Max wrote that just doesn't appeal to me at all to mm -hmm. some way, way, way out there. But, you know, um, I'm sure there was going to be something in the future where I'd want to be able to be able to get a limited edition MBNF watch. So we'll see. So it's still in my collection. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Moving along. Sticking with a modern style, sticking with modern style watches, mm. we've got a Resonance Type 1 Slim here, which is, I love this, this design, this design. I, I really love Resonance watches. Yeah. What, yeah. what do you think of these, Rick? What's your, what's your take on them? So this was a this was a uh, Tim Masso influenced watch purchase as well. Saw it. Uh, not a lot of these out there. You know, you go on Chrono Twenty Four and try to find a, a, a Resins Type One. That's probably the more accessible. This is not oil filled. Right. This is, uh, uh, yeah, built on a an ETA base movement, heavily heavily modified with the orbital thing. Um, you know, I'll be honest. This is a watch I got, and as soon as I got it, I'm like, you know, it, it, it just didn't. I didn't like the way that I actually like reading the time, but it's a when you got a lot of watches. I mean, this is a real pain in the ass to set. And when you got a lot of watches, that kind of drove me nuts. I mean, it's it's really, really uh, an effort. And um, didn't really love the watch. Never connected with it. So this one's gone. I sold this a couple of weeks ago. Beautiful watch. Oh, though. really? All, All right. right. Well, let's move on then from the sold watch to. Another oh, Roger Dupuis. Yeah, 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 I love that the one. Bi yeah, that was. I, I bet that. Yeah, I. This I, is I the think that that. The biretrograde perpetual, isn't it? The biretrograde yeah. perpetual. I knew the Bill perpetual. was going to love this yeah. one. Yeah, I was going to say that. Um, this may be something that Roger Dubuis may have done with um, Jean Marc Viterec. Because Viterec was doing the retrogrades and uh, Roger was doing the uh, perpetual, uh, the perpetual calendars. This is another watch that I want. I love this watch. Yeah. Well, so. everybody, everybody could have purchased this watch. This was uh, from uh, Delray Watch, uh, from Federico, our friend Federico, and uh, mm -hmm. it sat out there for a long time. And you know, I uh, I finally pulled the trigger. No, no. Uh, no box and papers, but it's obviously, you know, very authentic. The movement's there. Geneva seal on the movement. Mm -hmm. Great watch. Runs amazing, amazingly well. And that, you know, it's pretty cool to see the the retrograde day and date. I mean, it's just uh, in the moon phase. I think, it's a, I think it's just a very symmetrical, very cool design. This in a symphony case, that's the one that Brian Godberg has, mm -hmm. would be, in the symphony case would be, you know, four or five times probably what this watch is yeah. mm -hmm. so, um but beautiful watch fun i love the retrograde hands on either side at nine o'clock yeah. three o'clock i think they look really nice it's a really nice feature that for sure yeah all right so on to your fifth fp john wow. the <laughs> oh <my God>. beautiful <laughs> wow. oh, God. Beautiful. that's all i can say yeah Wow, that's uh, I agree with you, Blue Shirt. Yeah, wow, amazing. Yeah, so uh, what I would say about this is I haven't quite found the right strap yet. Uh, that's green. That's the what the strap that came with the watch. This was a this was a watch box purchase, again before Jorn skyrocketed. Uh, they don't make you know they don't make the Santagraph like this. They make it in the sport, the the line sport still, but they don't make it like this. So you know, again, maybe a future collectible. I don't think these have gone up you know, crazy, crazy, crazy in value. They've gone up, but um, uh, I've purchased a red strap that kind of not goes well with the sub dial hands, but um, still searching for sort of finding the right, the right color Jorn strap for this watch. Fun watch, 
great, uh, you know, really, really cool. kind of a, I, I think, you know, Bill, you're a Jorn guy. Um, I think the resonance, uh, you know, the resonance, the optimum, and the Santagraph, I mean, these are sort of classic Jorn, you know, stuff that isn't really done anywhere else. Yeah. You know what I like about this watch, and this is this is just a little thing, and I know it drives some people crazy, but the, the, uh, the nine and the three were made smaller. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you have the four, eight, and 12, and, you know, sort of the one size. The, the same thing is on the uh, Souverain. A couple, I think it's the eight and nine. They made smaller to just because uh, FP Jorn liked the looks better. And that's what I like so much about this is that when a watch you know goes ahead and it clips the uh, some of these numbers, people oh that's terrible and so forth. Like gee, I wonder what comes before the twelve since they clipped it. I have no idea what number that would be. You know, it's it's crazy. I love this watch. I, yeah, I just like want to say goodbye to Junior Johnson. Uh, take care, Junior. my friend. Yeah. Thanks yeah, for yeah, watching. I love this in precious metal much more than the modern day centographs. To be honest with you, with the uh, metal bracelets and yeah. Um, yeah, I, I love it. Really, really nice watch, Rick. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. All right, so we will move on. On to a Cartier. A Cartier. Cartier this is a ADLC-coated, uh, heavy, heavily loomed, as you can tell. I've included a loom shot. Uh, I am not much of a, uh, I, think, I think this is the only Roman numeral watch I own, but it's a Cartier, so it's got to be Roman numerals. Uh, but it's, but it's a, this is a sporty looking watch. The Roman numerals, isn't it? Sporty looking watch, fully loomed, see-through skeleton, die, but, but it's readable. Uh, very, yes. very readable. I owned a, uh, I owned a Zenith, uh, what do they call it? The Defy 21 skeletonized watch, and I found it. You know, I just couldn't read the time. This one, very, very readable, you know, day or night. Beautiful watch, fits well. Uh, same thing, quick release strap system that Cartier has. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, so you can swap that out. That's a rubberized strap on the back. And, uh, you know, just really, really comfortable, fun watch to wear. I, I really like this watch. I must agree with you, Rick. I think the Roman numerals really make it a lot more legible, seeing as it's skeletonized. I think they they, mm -hmm. they really do stand out a lot more and make mm -hmm. it much more readable. Definitely. Okay, we can keep moving. We will yeah. keep moving. On to... JLC Master Another Control. JLC. Timer. Yeah. yeah, so an alarm watch. Um, a an watch. alarm watch. Didn't have an alarm watch, and I love the love the blue dial. I like the light blue chapter rings that are on here, um, you know. And it's got it's got uh, it's got function, you know. And, and uh, this has got that old right. classic ALC school bell ring to it. I've posted a couple of videos of this watch, and uh, you know, forty millimeters, just a uh, you know. A, a reversal is clearly their classic watch, but I think. Memovox, you know, Memovox is probably right up there with one of their. The Memovox great is great. The Memovox is great, I think, because you can actually feel it ringing on your on your wrist as well, can't you? You, you can actually feel the alarm on your wrist. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm great I'm with Roy. Uh, it's a it's a gorgeous dial. Love this. And uh, great combination of colors. Yep, uh, it's it's awesome. All right, so we'll leave the JLC. One for, one for, one for Bill coming up next. The, uh, wow, Grunfeld, Grunfeld. 1941 wow. Remontoir. Here's a limited uh, edition of 188 pieces. Mr. Sanders, I was actually with you uh, when I when I purchased this, when I ordered this watch. I was at Watch Time New York whenever the last time they had it and uh, and went over to Cellini. And, you know, they were, they were going quick. A couple of other people we know also purchased... Uh, there were 188 pieces of the 1941 Remontoir that the Gronfeld brothers did and are doing. They have not all been delivered. I don't know if you saw the Tim Masso interview that he did with uh, Bart and Tim a week or two ago. I was stunned to learn, you know, probably something I should have known. They do, they, they did 40 watches last year. They, they made 40 watches last year. This was one of them. Really? Uh, 
Wow. So you you guys had to buy every one of those up and didn't leave a single one for me, and you know they only made 188. <laughs> I got left out. Oh, I love man. that one. Oh, I know man. that's what I was thinking too. This one and the uh, Optimum yeah. are my two favorite because I think you know the, the interesting thing, in fact, it was um Bruce and I and Adam mm -hmm. were talking to um Stephen uh for say right exactly mm -hmm. and we asked him he said how come more more watches uh, don't have the uh remontoir galate and he said it's really hard to do <laughs> so i thought <laughs> okay <laughs> finishing on this watch is wonderful the strap the details it's light blue skin on the strap uh, somebody in the comments posted that's a bespoke uh kari voodoo dial you know, they've done this in a couple of different colors. There's a sort of an ice blue color mm -hmm. as well. Um, a couple of other dial colors. You know, we've got a pretty active group. You see these a lot on your on your uh, Facebook group, Bill, and on Horology Talks. Um, you know, and I, there's a couple of other people that, you know, so this is not a piece unique. There are at least I've seen one or two others of this exact dial. But, you know, beautiful, beautiful watch. Love, wears great. Stunning 40, watch, great. 40 millimeters. Absolutely it. incredible. Incredible watch. Um, uh, love the the dial on that watch is just. Look different. at all the depths of it, though. Yeah. 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 I wish uh, uh, yeah. Armin was here because uh, he, he would he would love this watch. Uh, man. Spectacular. All right. Definitely. A on Moser. NS, mm. NS something has, yes. Uh, the uh, H Mosen C Pioneer. Thirty seconds. Were yep. you selling um, this one, Rick? Oh, there yeah, he is. Hey there. Hey, Amon. Uh, yeah. So this is actually a watch that I have po that I have posted for sale. Uh, Watchbox has this exact watch listed or did a week or two ago for thirteen nine ninety five, and I think most of you know you can get a little bit of a discount at Watchbox or European Watch. So you know you maybe you can get it for thirteen. Um, I've had this posted for sale simply because. You know, I've got a trade-in value on this and another Moser that you're going to see coming up. Um, I'm, I'm part of part of what I committed to is a, a new Moser, and uh, I'm shocked that this hasn't sold. This is a discontinued midnight blue dial, uh, classic Pioneer center seconds, midnight blue Fume dial. Hmm. Can't understand why it hasn't sold. I've got no downside. You know, I've got my deal cut watch box, so if it doesn't sell. You know, it's going to get traded in on the new Moser that I'm getting that you'll see. In a little bit, but uh, great watch. You know, Moser does. Uh, Moser does great dials, great watches, very readable. You know, and I'm selling it. You know, as far as I know, it's the cheapest one on the market right now. So, reach out if you're interested. It's not a commercial to sell it. I don't, it doesn't matter that much to me. I've got my my trade in cut, but uh, they're happy to let me sell it uh, uh, as well. Yeah. Uh, sure an won't. incredible watch. Yeah. I, I know, and something he he loves his and uh, and yeah. uh, you know, if, if I had yeah. the the funds readily available, I I I I jump on this as well. Uh, beautiful yeah. watch. And NS, NS, NS says it's great as a sports watch. He, th he thinks right. it's, it's the ultimate sports watch to put on a rubber strap. And he thinks he thinks it's wonderful. Yeah. And I agree. Incredibly versatile watch. I think I really like this. This is kind of watch they're, they're going to fade the uh, logo on it they don't have to on this one no they don't i agree bill completely agree with you all right moving on from the moser to patek Another Philippe five uh, five one five nine g oh and another another here's another uh um roman numeral watch rick I guess, yeah. So it's a good point. It's a good point. But it's really um, they're separated and thin and readable. You know, so this is one where I saw another collector, uh, Howard from uh, Howard Lichtig from Cleveland, and he has this watch in rose gold. And I, I just looked at that sunray sunburst from the center dial. I looked at this. This watch, it was current catalog in Patek. It's been in their run out. But it's a it's a watch that I think has a ninety seven thousand dollar list price uh, on it, and it, it, you know I paid way 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 you know a lot less than half that for this watch um, 
full box and paper is just a beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous looking watch in my opinion. So absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more. It's, it's stunning. Just, 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 just amazing. I like the retrograde calendar and the, uh, the date window right under, right under 12 o'clock is sort of like surprise. <laughs> I like that. That's a, uh, you know, that window, that window, you know, so this is a perpetual. So that is the uh, leap year indicator, that little window. right wow. under Oh, oh, okay. So it's just one through four. Okay. I was going to say, hmm. Rick, uh, Foreman uh, Colossus is asking, are the, are the hands blued or are they black? I think they're blued. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Wow. Amazing watch. All right, and he, mm. you couldn't complete your collection without one of these next watches, which is mm. the Devathun mm. DB28. Beautiful, mm. Rick. Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Got to have one of these in the collection, haven't you? What do you, What's well, your opinion uh, on Devathun? I think they do some amazing pieces. Um, I was really torn between sort of this DB28 series, which you know kind of has that Star Trek look. Let's be honest, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then the, the DB25, which is a little bit more the classic look. They do the Starry Varius with the little gold. Right. Dot. Yeah. So it looks yeah. like a constellation. And, you know, I mean, wouldn't be completely shocked if I ended up trading this for a DB25 at some point in time. Mm -hmm. It is a super comfortable watch. Yeah. Watch. I, I, I was going to just say that there's nothing. I tried one, uh, a couple of these on it at watch time um, with, with Bill. And, uh, there's no other watch um, quite like one of these debatoons uh, on the wrist, the way it feels, the way it conforms. Uh, it, it's just such a cool watch. Such a cool watch. Those, those articulated lugs are just, just something mm -hmm. else, aren't they? They're just amazing. Yeah. Yeah, spring spring lugs. This happens to be the short set. They make a regular and a, right. and a smaller, and this just fits me better, and the watch came that way. I bought this from Steve Halleck out in California to – TikToking, Steve kind of traffics in some high-end stuff, kind of a quirky, a little bit of a quirky guy, but uh, has some really, really, really great stuff. It's a it's a fun, great watch. I don't know. This was one of fifty that was made. They won the uh, the uh, GPHG Grand mm -hmm. Prize, uh, the, the uh, you know, a number of years ago for this watch. And so, yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome Beautiful. watch. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. So oh, I like a, that one. Yeah. This is more the Amin Reviews watch, isn't it? Correct. It's Bulgari Octofenissimo in blue dial. I love Gorgeous. that blue. Wow. I love it. What a dial this is. This is a really stunning, striking blue this is. Yeah. I bought Gorgeous. this watch because of my friend Amin. I mean, he bought the watch first. Right. I bought and loved it and uh, went and tried it on and... Uh, you know, I think these are still, I don't know if you can walk in and get them, but I mean, I think yeah. within a few weeks, you can probably end up getting these. I mean, I think it's a great series. They Super, super, super comfortable. This blue dial. I think I've got the same experience as Ama that I actually went into the, into the boutique intending to buy the black version because I've got so many blue dial watches mm -hmm. and um, the black dial just doesn't have this, you know, this pop. Yeah. That, that the blue has. And when I saw the blue, I'm like, well, there's just no, I think that's the same experience that Amon had as well, that he was considering the black before he saw the blue and then uh, got the blue. It, I mean, it's hard until you try this watch on, it is hard to really show in pictures or explain how light and how thin this watch is for a, a nine or a $10,000 watch. I mean, I think this mm. is fantastic engineering, beautiful watch. I love wearing it. Yeah. And super thin. And and just just amazing and and like you said that blue just pops and the 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 black dial compared to this just doesn't doesn't hold the candle to it. Yeah, right. it's probably my favorite color dial of the, of the lot for the octo. Mm. We're making progress, guys. I promise. There's not much. <laughs> yeah. More. Well, go, going on to the Rolex next, the Rolex Daytona. The five, the one one six five one nine LN. This is the gold on the uh, oyster flex, isn't it? Yeah. If you've never tried an oyster flex on, you should do yourself a treat and try yes. oyster flex. It is not a rubber. It's not like a rubber bee or a right. uh, an Everest, you know, rubber strap. This is actually a titanium 
bracelet that's rubber coated and it's got some little cushion things under there to give you like the perfect fit. Again, because of the contrast rancher on this watch, I've you know, <laughs> not, the, not the world's biggest uh, uh, Daytona fan. I owned a I owned a steel bracelet, black dial, um, enjoyed it for a few years. But when they tripled in value, you know, that was going to be worth more to somebody else than it was to me. Now, these have gone up. I mean, this watch, you know, a year ago, you could buy this. For, well, maybe 18 months ago, you could buy this pretty much at retail, precious metal Rolex. You could buy it at retail, but uh, you know now they're they're they've shot up like everything else. So it's uh, it's a lot more. But I, I wear the heck out of this watch. It's a uh, great feel, great look. Um, Oyster Flex is awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I couldn't agree with you more about it. Yeah. Do yourself a favor if you ever get a chance to try on um, something with the uh, Oyster Flex, um, uh, definitely uh, try it on because it, it feels like no other um, you know rubber strap. They're 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 amazing. And like you, Rick, I'm not the biggest Daytona fan in the world, but this watch is just uh, it's beautiful. Really, I like really my nice. color combination. Yes, agree, Bill. Yeah, it's just nice, Bill. And like Rick says, it's not it's it it is coated metal, isn't it? It's not just like an Everest or rubber bee. It's actually got a metal inside the yep. lining. Mm. So that's great. Yeah. All right. We leave the Daytona. Oh, yeah. Ooh, wow. the, Mimosa, the Endeavor wow. Petrol Moon yeah. Vanta Black. Wow. Yeah. Look at that. Vanta Black right. dial. Look at that's that. A, stunning. That's black hole black. That is a wonderful watch. You can get lost in that yeah. watch. Agreed. Absolutely, Bill. Yeah. With that little crescent on the bottom with the moon. Yeah. What, 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 what drew you to this one, Rick? Well, I get a lot of Vanta Black. Um, mm -hmm. you know, they make a couple of Moser makes a couple of different models with the Vanta Black, and I think they're going to end up doing some more. In Vanta Black, so it's unique. It's different. I'm not aware of anybody else that does Vanta Black, and it really is like 99.9 something percent black. Um, really fell in love with it. I was a little concerned about the size, and then uh, I tried it on. And if you look at the case shape on this, the the case back is actually curved, so it just hugs the wrist. It fits mm -hmm. really, really, really well. This is going to get traded in as well, um, so I'll post this for sale at some point in time. Um, one of 50, you know, I think most of these Vanta Blacks, they do in a limited, in a limited edition, uh, but a great, I, I think it straddles dressy and sporty and fun and different and unique. You don't see anything else like it. So just kind of a, a, a cool watch. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Nice one. Definitely. Well, it out Movado is Movado. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For sure. I know For a lot sure. of people are fans of the Vanta Black and uh, it's a, Special material, isn't it? It's a special finish, definitely. Jeez. All right, we'll move on from the Moser. This next one, you got rather, rather recently, didn't you, Rick? The Morris Grossman Power Reserve, the the twelfth birthday edition, limited to twelve pieces. You got this quite recently, didn't you? I did. I got this along with uh, along with the uh, the Vanta Black. I purchased those together from. Uh, from a, an AD that I've got a good relationship with. Take a look at the thinness of those hands on yeah. that watch. Yeah, yeah. I know. Wow. Doesn't show up real well in pictures, but this is a blackened steel. So I don't think it's ADLC coded, but it is a blackened steel. So it's actually kind of a black case. Um, the movement, I posted a picture on Instagram of the movement of this watch. I mean, the, the, the finishing, and I know Bill is a, is a, a fan of, uh, has talked to Christine Hutter and a fan of, mm -hmm. of the work that they do. These are really upper, underrepresented. I think we've got you know people from elsewhere outside the US, but Moritz Grossman has no distribution. I think they are only sold at Cellini and there's an AD in Colorado. And then my Chicago AD has picked them up on a, on a limited basis. So they're really underrepresented, but the, the story of a female executive, you know, she worked at Langa for a long time and started Moritz Grossman mm -hmm. um, and the work that they do and the few watches. I mean, that's a brand that's on the rise. I found this is a watch that I purchased just seeing it on Instagram and then uh, 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 exploring a little more the, uh, you know, the brand director spent, an hour and a half with me 
going through the whole series of Moritz Grossman watches mm -hmm. and uh, just wears really well. Great hand wound, beautiful, beautiful classic watch. Love it. Yeah. It's a I, great I, one. Yeah. They have them at Cellini. <clears throat> did, did you already mention that, uh, Rick? Yeah, I think Cellini and a and a AD out of Colorado, and that's that's all. That's no, uh, Cellini's in New York. Yeah, yeah, I know. And then another another AD in Colorado, Bill. It's the only yeah. distributorship they have in the U.S. Yeah, at, at the last watch time, um, Christine literally spent twenty minutes with me, uh, and we were I was trying on every single watch that they were displaying at, at watch time. Um, really impressive brand, beautiful watches. Um, and uh, this one is 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 no different. Um, really, uh, those hands are just spectacular. At how they get them to look like that, and how they're so thin. Uh, just very cool watches, but un under under uh, underexposed here in the United States for sure. Yep. All right. So we'll leave Moritz Grossman. So next, so we've got uh, Stefan Kudoka 2, yeah, Stefan Kudoka 2, so it's down to independence. I'd say, Bill, you probably influenced me a little bit on, uh, on Stefan Kudoka. Yeah, Kudoki. yeah, I had, uh, oh boy, um, Kudoki is, you know, one of the Dresden guys, and they usually turn out the most interesting stuff, and the thing about Stefan uh, Kadoki, I think they're waiting on him to do something a little more dramatic with the movement. This watch I really like a lot. It won the uh, Grand Prix for Petit Aiguille. And, you know, it's a cool looking watch. Uh, it's, it's called what the K, I think it called the Kadoki 2. <laughs> mm, <laughs> he yep. knocks himself out on name. But one of the interesting things that I wondered about. He is an AHCI candidate, and uh, there was a French guy, Cyril somebody, who had these beautiful handmade watches, and I think he, they both came on as candidates at the same time, but Cyril went up to the ranks, and I think, I, I think it has to do with waiting for him to come out with something a little more original, but uh, this watch is a beautiful watch. It's really gone up in price too, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. So most of the Kadoki twos are uh, a white dial, kind of a cream dial. Uh, I bought this from Martin Pauly in, uh, you know, uh, Philadelphia, pretty well, known, pretty well known AD in Philadelphia. He represents mm -hmm. them along with a few other people. They're not, they don't have wide distributorship, but he, he called and said, Hey, I've got this on order. It's coming in. I still haven't seen anybody else post a black dial Kadoki too. This is not a piece unique. Um, and I didn't custom order it. Martin might've, I don't really know, but I love it. I would have been just as happy with the white dial or the cream dial or whatever it is. Right. But uh, right. I think that engraving, and you know, and I think this is one yeah. where if he becomes not a candidate, but a full member, ACHI member, uh, watch out relative. Oh uh, yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I like the day night thing that he has on Kadoki too. Yeah, just really, really lovely watch. All right. Another so chapter. Another chapter, the passage to Drake. This is, I love this one more than the first one you showed. Uh, Rick. Steel, this is my, fa watch. my favorite chapter uh, you've got. Steel sports watch, uh, integrated steel bracelet, you know, rivals. I'll tell you, the, the bracelet rivals uh, in overseas or a Nautilus, a uh, Royal Oak type bracelet. Uh, this, uh, I think they call it a stairway to heaven type dial, hard to photograph, but uh, really a beautiful, beautiful 40 millimeter steel Stunning. sports watch. Um, this, this particular dial was a limited edition of 40, it sold out, but the other colors, um, blue, uh, I forget what other colors they have, they're regular production, they're available at chopic.com. Um, Great looking watch, I think. Very different, you know. Have, to me, this has a little bit of a Vacheron look to it, but you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, really, really yep. nice. And I'm with you, Thomas. I kind of like this one better than the, than the other Chapek, but yeah, they're, uh, this beautiful. is more sport sports watch, isn't it? It's more everyday sort of wear. Yeah. And and I'm with ID guy. It kind of reminded me of a GP Laureato a little bit. Yep. 
I agree. A bit like that. a L'Oreal, right. so a bit like an overseas, a bit like a Vacheron overseas, a bit just got, mm-hmm. got that look around it, yeah. Or those looks definitely. All right. So, so the no. next one, everyone else will be able to relate to this one in the audience. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is sure. a. Rick took this and just 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 for everyone in the audience, just to just so they can relate to the uh, show. So this is his uh, Casio G Shock no. GA nine hundred SKE eight A transparent. Yes, Scott. So, so I think uh, it's beta to watch. Okay. I think last I think last week Thomas I heard that. Uh... All right. Well, then get it. So somebody's somebody's got a mute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Ranch, rancher mute. Yeah. Um, so sorry so, about that. Um, I think Thomas, I heard last week that you didn't own a G Shock. Is that right? Yeah, I don't have one. And and I didn't either. This was an influence, a purchase influenced by our friend uh, from last week, Chris, the Watch Lounge. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, just ah, Rick, gotta, right. Got to get a G Shock. Got to get a G Shock. Got to get a G Shock. <laughs> um, I don't know, you know, who knows, $200 investment, who cares? But, um, you know, we'll see. It, it's new relative. I've only had it a month or two. We'll, we'll, we'll see, uh, you know, with my collection, it's sort of hard to figure out why I'd have a G-Shock. But, um, I do. <laughs> <laughs> you got, All right. You've got, you've got quite a few watches that you can use as beaters, but this is your right. real beater for, uh, when you want to get di- when you want to get dirty with this watch yeah. in the garden or in the you, you, you cleaning the car or the uh, doing but not with want. this watch but not this oh, one the ground sake of the white birch this is no this dial uh, I love this dial Rick it's just uh, beautiful they've done it so well don't you think uh, my first and only grand Seiko uh, I will tell you this so I don't really you know, all I hear from all of you is Grand Seiko makes kind of crappy bracelets. I think they must have upgraded the bracelet on this one because this mm-hmm. bracelet feels just like a Rolex or an Omega bracelet to me. It feels solid and and uh, awesome. It's a great watch. I, you know, I'm a I'm a dial I'm a dial guy, and this dial was so when it came out, I just fell in love with all the pictures of the dial. This picture doesn't really do it justice. It is it is so stunning. I think Grand Seiko does dials as well as anybody, maybe better than most. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think Moser and Grand Seiko are uh, dial kings. I think, uh, they, they, they really do great dials. Well, not not kings as in Vutalainen style dial, you know, but I think for the your average Joe, you know, I think Grand Seiko and Moser are great, great dials. Yeah, I, I'm not as every as all you guys know. I'm not the the biggest Grand Seiko fan, but this style is really nice, really, really nice. Yeah, lovely, isn't it, Blue Shirt? It Definitely. is. It is indeed. All right, so leave the GS. Well, next one is the watch we were we all waiting for. It's the Omega Speedmaster Three Two One Ed Y. This is the one that wow. we all want to get our hands on. This is gorgeous, yep. Rick. Wearing that watch when right now. Get your hands on this one. It's uh, on my wrist right now. I was, uh, you know, so the Beautiful. day that this was released, I uh, I, I, I uh, put a 50% deposit down with the Omega mm-hmm. Boutique, and uh, I've got a good relationship. I've got a good relationship there. We're almost done. And um, uh, and then when the Silver Snoopy got released, you know, six or eight months later, I said, oh, I want that too. And, you know, the AD let me use the deposit to nice. to secure both watches. Wasn't really sure which one was going to come in first. And I was uh, um, surprised to get the call that this came in. The, you know, just, I know other people have these on order, but, you know, I'm in, I'm in Chicago, so I'm in a major, major city. It's a, it's an, this is an Omega boutique owned by Omega. Um, and she, when they, when I took delivery of the watch, she said, you know, first one we've had in and uh, we're going to get, uh, we expect three more this year for a total of four in a major, major Omega boutique. So that tells you how slow these Ed White uh, 321 mm-hmm. watches are coming in. The finishing, the finishing is exquisite. Uh, I've posted a couple of pictures of the, of the movement. Um, you know, I'm not much. I don't do watch reviews or anything else. But I will tell you, um, for me, 
you know, there's probably a little bit of falling in love that I still have to do with this only because of the price. Yeah, you know, it's, this, yeah, this it's is an expensive, expensive watch. It and, is. And there are so many Speedmasters that have a similar look and feel and function that you can get for a third, probably maybe less, a third of the price of yeah. this. It's a 14000 14, US dollar watch, I think. And I don't know that it's, you know, I mean, I don't know that I enjoy it $14,000 worth, but it's beautiful to have. And it's a gorgeous watch and a collector piece and hard to get. And, uh, you know, fits great. Very readable. Lovely watch. Beautiful. One of the kind of watches you end up taking off and looking at the back, though. Do you do, you do that often do. with this watch? I, I, I do. I, I brought it on this trip that I'm on intentionally mm -hmm. so that I can wear it and look at it and... Great, and, uh, yeah. Really well, enjoy congratulations, it. Rick. It, it's a beauty. Yeah. Beauty. And let's move to the final so watch. From, from watch Rick. number 44 to the 45th watch we've got in your collection, the Rolex Submariner Sermit Starbucks. This so is, I owned uh, it. This, oh. I this owned, is your I most recent acquisition, is it? Yep, I've just had that a couple of weeks. Um, I owned a Hulk and... Um, it was, you know, for me, uh, this is all personal taste. For me, just like two in your face, green with the green dial. And when this got introduced, I knew that I was going to enjoy this more. So I don't know, Sermit, Starbucks, whatever the heck they call this. But I find this just to be a, you know, a little more classic look, a little more understated. Mm -hmm. You know, again, we're not going to have to spend a lot of time talking about this, but it's just a, a great watch, super comfortable. What can you say about a Submariner? I mean, it's just uh, it's one of those classic watches you need to own I'm, I'm glad i have it i'll keep this in the yep. collection forever beautiful watch yeah very cool very cool, cool. beautiful yeah. uh really nice okay now but okay but rick is this a you love it watch or is this a check mark watch it's like okay check throw in the box you, you know I'll, I'll be honest this is one that i told my ad you know uh when you get one i'd love to have one I ended up uh uh, having lunch with him, you know, nine months after that conversation, and he whips out this watch. I forgot that I even forgot that I even told him that I wanted the watch. <laughs> oh wow! Oh wow! <laughs> I think that pretty much sounds okay. I've got my hand there. Yeah. All so right. I mean, congratulations, Rick, on the yeah, collection. Exactly. You've got forty-five yeah. watches, and amazing. You've stunned us through and through. Exactly. Okay. You, we've got coming attractions coming up now. Wait, wait, we'll take these, a break. These, I might need to go smoke a cigarette or something. Yeah. <laughs> these are, these, these I, are the watches I quit that you've smoking got on. and I need to go smoke a cigarette. These are, the, <laughs> these, are the, these are the these are the watches you've got on order coming in. Like post coming watches. No, damn it! Uh, I need a post coital cigarette. Yeah, the, <laughs> just as you're in the movies, um, the coming attractions are in the beginning, but. Uh. For for us, we got coming attractions at the end of the collection. So the the these are pieces that Rick has incoming. Starting off with, oops. I feel sorry for the poor slob who's got to follow up with their collection after Rick's. Uh oh, hold on. What's wrong here? Their end will be swift and merciful. Yeah. <laughs> Let me. Give me, give me a second, because I got a yeah. pull yeah. out some attractions yeah. here. Well, as, as you're as you're queuing that up, Bruce, I'll uh, you know I I need to uh, so that that was 44 watches that you saw. Some of those, as you heard, had left my collection, but I'm probably at 40 right now. You're going to see six watches that I've committed to where I've where I've ordered them. I need to uh, I need to lighten the load on my collection. So you're going to see you know over time me post some other watches for sale if i don't sell them they'll end up going on chrono 24 or i'll end up using them to trade for something else but it's hard you know i know others are others of you are like me where you are better buyers than sellers it's not that i don't it's not that i don't know how to sell a watch or that i that i don't it's the emotional connection in trying to sell something because i love all the watches so it's just so hard for me to uh to let go of the right. piece Okay, well, here we go. So, the winding watch is saying, I'm sure that the coming watches are nothing special. Don't be too yeah. sure, Colin. Yeah. These are the best yeah, ones. Yeah. We, we saved yeah, the Colin, best till last. Colin's a wonderful, uh, distinguished we collector. We saved the best till last. Yeah. 
So yeah, we've got so, uh, Omega Speed Master Silver, Silver, Silver Snoopy we've got here. Yep. This is going to be the first one, Ray. Watch, you know, love the love the uh, little animation show that they've got going on the back. I kind of like that uh, canvas type strap that they've got. I just mm -hmm. I love the look. I think this will be fun. You know, this is a watch that's going to sit in my collection forever. It's not. Uh, I'm not a. I'm not a flipper. Um, yeah, I'm, I've got watches that have gone up in value. So you know, it's nice to be able to say, "Gee, I've got trade value." If I ever come across something right. that I want, I can trade it in. But that's you know, uh, these are for personal enjoyment. So yeah, really happy to have this. I I may not see this watch until 2022 is kind of what they're telling me. But right. Right. I, I don't know. When the watch goes up wow. in value, even though you have no intention of selling it, it's still kind of a feather in your cap, though, is the way I look at it. In other words, I made the right I made the right call, and evidently everyone, a lot of people agree with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although I've purchased, you'll see a couple of watches here that I've got coming that I know will go down in value, but I loved it anyway. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so. All right. So we'll move on from the Snoopy. We're going wow. away. Oh, oh, that Tiger Eye. The Edge Moser oh, oh, oh. Endeavor Concept Torbion Tiger's Eye, or the Ox's oh, Eye, as you put it, Rick. Yeah. All right. So love it. I love, love this it, watch, love Rick. Love I love it. it. Love it. Love it. Wow. Yeah. You know, committed to this, uh, I think, just when they introduced it at uh, Watches and Wonders a couple of weeks ago. I don't know the Turbion. Um, I mean, I don't know that Turbions are particularly useful in this day and age, but I don't have one. Kind of fun to look at. Again, in the theme of I love unique, different dials. My only question was, I got to make sure that I get one. And I think ID Guy and I chatted about this on one of his live streams. I got to get one where the 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 stripes are horizontal on here. If I get yeah. one, you know, so I got a commitment from, uh, from Moser that, you know, I'm going to be able to see the watch before they ship it from Switzerland oh, and, good. Approve, That's and, approve, good. and approve the dial. And, you know, I love the blue dial version that they had, but I really like this rose gold case with this orange. And absolutely. absolutely. You want to make the sure the stripes are vertical because if they're horizontal, they'll make you look fat. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> no, you want, the Southwest you want them here. horizontal. You want yeah. them horizontal. I want them horizontal, but I don't want them cockeyed. You, do, you, do, you, don't, want them, you don't want them diagonal, though. You just don't want them diagonal. Yeah, I don't want them diagonal. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, the just, next I, I love the this next... one. Yeah. Oh. Beautiful. All right. The next, the next one. Attraction. Wow. Yeah, the next coming attraction, another JLC reverse oh, yeah. non ATM with the jump power. Right, so this, this has got so the jump power. Lot, the, uh, wow. You know, so the uh, uh, the digital, the Zeitwerk, the the uh, Jorn does a kind of a jumping hour. You know, so there's these jumping digital hour type watches. You got a classic watch on the one side. You've got this digital, semi digital jumping hour display on the back uh, um very this limited edition but you know this was this was a pricey a pricey watch you know yeah. so if i decide that mm -hmm. a, a year later i want to sell that i'm not i'm, I'm gonna take a, a big hit but i'm not gonna sell it i mean it's just a it's a right. class reverso that they did i i just find this it's so different i just find this to be stunning so i love this watch. this is the best one you've <laughs> got this is the best one you've got i think so far because it's got the tribute dial on one side, and then, like you said, it's got the digital jumping hours on the on the other side, which are just just looks stunning, amazing, Rick. It yeah, really amazing. is. Just truly, just truly else. gorgeous. Yeah. Um, the best in the world. <laughs> yeah, you the got a jumping hour. Worlds. Yeah, I really the like this. Well, you got a watch that you can really has has. A split personality, you know, dual yeah. identity. Really, really fell in love with this. Really fell in love with this. God bless, man. Congrats. I, I can't wait to uh, to see more pictures of this watch once you get it. It's probably a summer, J July or August type delivery is what I'm being told. I mean, wow. these coming attractions could be a, could be a collection in themselves. So, I mean, Correct. They're, they're amazing. Easily. 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 All right. Um, the next one. So the, the uh, next one, the A Langan and Son Little Langer One Moon. Wow, beautiful. 
Wow. So this was introduced, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago. Watches and Wonders. It's a package deal. Um, we don't have time for the story, but um, Longa is going down this path like so many others. That if you want something, you got to buy something else. But I actually happen to like this. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, you know, I think this is thirty-seven and a half millimeters. But this watch with this gold flux, kind of an it's like an adventuring like dial, right? But look at the stars. It's the first time they've ever done that. The stars at uh, one and two and four and five. Um, you know, I think it's going to be a cool watch. Uh, really, really great watch. I think it's going to be kind of hard to get. Uh, but this wasn't the primary. This wasn't the uh, this wasn't the primary purchase. That was uh, something else that you're going to see here in a minute. Uh, this this was. Uh, uh, I, I had I had to purchase this uh, to get the other watch. Mm -hmm. which Pisses me off a little bit, but yeah, that's the, the game you got to play now. Unfortunately, just, the other watch is absolutely knockout, Rick. It's just mm. beautiful. The next Langer, yeah. and so, I, I, I hate to leave this one because I like this one so much. Um, that's because it's a blue dial, blue shirt. Yeah, I but know, next, I know. The next, the next one's much nicer, I think, for me. I prefer the next one, the A Langer's uh, Langer one. one. Petrol. Like oh. a limited edition of wow. 150. Look at that summon dial. Wow. Oh. oh. Stunning. So the story goes that it took them, you know, like their whole history to figure out how to do a perpetual watch, perpetual complication in the classic Longa One design. You know, yeah. they can't deviate from the design. So look at the chapter ring on the outside and look what they've done. Now they made a they made a version a perpetual with a tourbillon a couple of years ago that was a three hundred some thousand dollar watch. This is a third of that. Mm -hmm. uh, Bargain. I, I love this. They, they, they did a gray dial, unlimited version in gray, a gray dial as well in a in a rose gold case that I think is gorgeous as well, but I really wanted this limited edition. They don't call it salmon. They call it a pink gold dial, and it actually is a yeah. gold I call it gorgeous. That's what yeah. I call it. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. I like the way the, the months um, go around the side, the uh, May, April, and so forth. I, I, I'm not sure I've seen that before. At first, I thought it was a uh, world timer, but then I realized those are those are the months. Uh, just a, this is a wonderful watch. Yeah, just 150 yes. pieces for the edition. But you know, Langa is playing that application game. Now, remember, I've got a good relationship. I bought that that Longa one, you know, 25 piece, not an inexpensive Longa one, by the way. You know, but even with that purchase history, um, you know, because they could do it, they were able to. Uh, you know, they were able to. Uh, you know, command uh, needing to purchase something else. So, you know, that's that's the game we're playing these days. Yeah, sad, yeah. sad, but true. Sad, 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 isn't it? But true, like Lucia says, yeah. And we're at the last one, guys. So, so the next one is stunning. Absolutely, this is the highlight for me. This is the absolute highlight. Carrie Vutelain and Ving A. Oh. Platinum with bespoke dial. Wow. So we've, we've only got a photo of the dial at the moment, haven't we, Rick? So this is being made for you at the moment, I presume. So this is a piece unique. Um, I worked with Kari and my AD. My AD actually started on the project, and then I worked with Kari on, on uh, designing the wow. dial. The watch shipped from uh, Kari last week. I, I unfortunately am not going to be in a place where I'm going to be able to get the watch for a few more weeks. So it's probably going to be, uh, you know, closer to um, the end of the end of May or early June before I actually see the watch in my hands. But, um, you know, you can customize everything. I mean, Kari just does dials like no one else. So um, this is platinum. Uh, so a, you know, definitely a heavy meaty piece, but that dial in the, the stub dial, uh, the the guilloche, the dial work that Kari does. Um, you know, I, I, I'm often asked, you know, do you have a Grail? And I don't have a Grail, and this wouldn't necessarily be, you know, my Grail. But this is 
this has been a labor of love. It's been ongoing for almost a year, uh, which right. is what you're doing, working with independent watchmakers right now. You're you're having to wait a long, long time to get things. So uh, yeah, what 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 from Prey was asking how long? What's the wait for a carry Vuitton? Do you know that? <laughs> yeah, it's about about eighteen about eighteen months right now. I, I, and I'm told that Gronefeld is now uh, 18 to 24 months out on anything that they're doing. Um, really? So that's what you're starting to see with all the independent watchmakers. Wow. I, I was originally sort of promised, or I don't know about promised, but you know, indicated that I'd have this by last Christmas, and that came and went, and here we are in you know, midway, almost midway through the year. And I'm, you know, just now going to get it. So uh, it, but this is, this was about, about a 14, 15 month process. I waited, uh, I waited, uh, I think 14 or 15 months on that Gronfeld uh, mm -hmm. well from the time I ordered it. So that's pretty, pretty Congratulations typical. though, Rick. I yeah. mean, big yeah. congratulations. This is a wow. big achievement and wow. Yeah. Freaking wow. Amazing. Unbelievable. Really a wonderful, Okay, now let's. Uh, all right, I, I'm just. I'm again. I'm just going to come out and say it. You know, out of all out of your collection, it's like. Ooh, I mean, someone said it's like a multi level fireworks show. You know, ooh, pop, ah, ooh, and then it was a Rolex. It's like, eh, <laughs> ooh, ah, uh, Rolex. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Uh, let me just interrupt happy one happy. second. Uh, happy birthday, Megan Arthur. Well, uh, thank you for yeah, joining us. Happy birthday, Megan. Happy birthday, Megan. Happy birthday, happy Megan. Birthday. Yeah, glad you can join us. Great to see you. I'd just like to ask you, Rick, out of the, not including the incoming attractions, but out of the watches you've shown us so far, could you say that you could pick one which was your favorite oh, out of those? Good question. Yeah. I, I, Thomas, I can't, you know, I, I, I could no. probably pick a half a dozen or, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. eight or 10 yeah, no, that, I, that I think are more, you know, that I'm more drawn to than others. But, you know, I, I, I looked, I keep a spreadsheet of everything and I, I, I looked and so I've got 40 watches in the collection right now, but I've also sold 40 watches over the last eight or 10 years as well. Right. Uh, wow. So, you know, I mean, if I find that I'm not wearing something or don't enjoy it, uh, or that the value of the watch, up, yeah. you know, to, somebody else is going to enjoy it for that price more than more than I would, then out uh, out they go. But uh, no, no favorite watch, no you know, Grail watch that I have. Um, you know, some stuff gets a little more wrist time than others, but uh, which I, one gets the most rich wrist time? You know, I'd say that the the Vacheron overseas the the uh, Rolex uh, Skydweller mm -hmm. and and uh, the Paddock fifty five twenty four Pilot Travel Time those those watches get a little more a little more wrist time than others but I rotate there's no rhyme or reason I don't wear a watch too you know generally more than a couple of days in a row I normally go to my watch box and pick out a different watch uh, yeah. every morning no rhyme or reason to what I'm picking out I mean it's just uh, whatever whatever I'm in the mood for that day and I do keep you know, for security reasons, obviously, I keep the watches in several different locations and sure, you know, sure. yeah. safe, so they're makes, not always always sense. accessible. So I may go six months and not even have access to a watch because it's in a in a bank. Right, in a, right, in a right, right, right. That, and Forbin was asking, and he said it earlier, Forbin, but he he does buy pre-owned as as well as as new. In, 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 I buy a lot of pre-owned. Right. I buy a lot of pre-owned. Yeah. yeah. Now, Megan Arthur is wondering if you have any vintage in your collection, which is a good question. Uh, just the two Roger Dubois, and then I had uh, I had a, a Rolex date chest with a Buckley dial that was vintage. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, what else did I have? I had, I had another vintage watch. Oh, I had a vintage uh, uh, Seamaster chronograph uh, from sort of the 1970s that I had restored. Mm. And um, but I'm not a I'm not a not a not a vintage uh, junkie. Don't avoid it, but I just don't know much. Got it. And and Dodger wants to know your safe's combination. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One, one, two, three, four. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, just, how, how much? Thank you. Thank you so much for this. I mean, it's been a 
sheer joy of a show. Well, I mean, okay, wow. guys, but I, I almost think we have a unique opportunity here to pick Rick's brain. Sure, if you got a couple more minutes yeah. for us, Rick, and then we'll wrap it up and let you go. Sure. Uh, where where have you seen the watch industry going in general in, say, the past five years? Where do you see it going to? Well, I think it's uh, more consumer direct interaction uh, as opposed to the old classic model of, you know, the brands dealing with um, ADs and then the ADs dealing with consumers. I think you're, you're seeing even bigger brands uh, reach out and get involved with collectors like us on a more direct basis. Um, I don't think, I don't think um, ADs and retailers are necessarily going away, but I think they're going to have to play the game a little more carefully. I saw uh, a video with Edward Milan the other day where he was talking about opening Moser boutiques around the world, y you know, so, you know, I don't know if you're a, if you're a multi-brand AD, um, you know, you got to think about how you're going to, how you're going to play that going forward. Um, you know, I think certainly, certainly with the, uh, with the advent of the difficulty in getting Rolex and Paddock and, and AP, Nobody, nobody made a comment. No APs in your collection, Rick. But I've had a couple, but I don't have any. I don't have any APs in my collection now. But the difficulty in getting those three brands, I think it's lifted the boat of Grand Seiko, of Omega, of all the independents, of Zenith. I think they're all beneficiaries of all these brands. Um, uh, Longines, you know, ID guy is on the stream. I mean, that's a beautiful Avigation big eye at, you know, like $2,000 or, you know, US. Mm -hmm. Great watch for the price and beautiful yep. design, and beautiful dial. And I think Longines, Zenith, all these brands are benefiting from the difficulty of, uh, you know, I mean, we're all getting sort of fed up. Uh, even, even when you've got the relationship, it's a little frustrating to not be able to kind of get what you want in Paddock and Rolex and AP. Agreed. Well, I've also yeah. noticed you're one of the you're uh, there seemed to be a little a nice of course there's somebody it's hard to keep track of it's I almost we almost needed a spreadsheet but um, it almost seemed like there was a nice mixture of sports office and dress yeah in your collection yep yep of course you know of course leaving the corporate world world we understand that you're kind of maybe reeling it in from the dress pieces a little bit or the office pieces. Yep. But, uh, how, how do you think, what, how do you, how do you think it's, how do you think, uh, you think it's going to continue the recent trend of going all towards all steel sports, all brands, or is there still a uh, possibility left for uh, fancier pieces or dress pieces? No, I, I don't think it's going to go all steel sports. I mean, that's certainly a category that appeals to a lot of people and, I think, you know, every, every collector should have some steel sports pieces, but um, there's a lot of others. I mean, if you scroll back through and take a look at my collection, go through my, go through my Instagram, I've got, you know, a handful of steel sports pieces, but I've got an awful lot that are not. So, For, Forbin has a good uh, question here. Do you think the price run-ups on pretty much everything, um, not just the, you know, the three that we, that, that you all can't get, um, represent a bubble that, that may eventually burst or do you just see things continuing to move up and up and up and up? I think there could be a little bit of pullback, but I wouldn't call it a burst. And I think Rolex in particular, um, you know, the price of a steel Daytona today or any of the, any of the popular uh, Rolex uh, steel sport pieces, I, you know, it's almost, you can't really make sense of where they've gone. I think those could come back. They're never going to come back, you know, to retail or below retail. But could they pull back 20, 30 percent? I mean, a Daytona mm -hmm. has gone from what is what what's a steel Daytona? Twelve thousand dollar watch that right. was selling for eighteen, you know, two years ago and right. twenty a year ago, and they're yeah. thirty today. Correct. Could, could they, Correct. Could they, be, could they be twenty or twenty four or eighteen a year from now? Sure. But I'm like they're, they're never going to be. You're never going to be able to get a Daytona for twelve pre-owned, right? All right, um, Bill. Did you have any um, any final thoughts and and any favorites in, in Rick's amazing collection? Yeah, no. I was listening uh, to what Rick said, and I I don't know what's going to happen. I I've seen some watches. Uh, 
of certain certain designers that have gone up very quickly, and it surprised me that they did. Uh, people like uh, Daniel Roth and uh, and Roger Dubuis suddenly they just shot up, and I thought, well, who told them? You know, I like to get them while they're at a fairly good price, but apparently, I think that means that perhaps the collectors are not as sort of single-minded on a certain brand that they used to be. And part of that may be a reflection of what you said, Rick, about, you know, these guys have sort of gone overboard on with Rolex and some of these other brands. And people are saying, well, you know, uh, if I get a Rolex, I don't know who the who made it. If I get a Patek Philippe, I don't know who made it. But if I get a, um, a Roger Dubuis, I know who made it. In my case, it's it's what I got. I got a chronograph and it, with a with an El Primero in it, but that's I know who made the case. I'll put it that way. No, mm. there's all kinds of, of interesting things going on, and and um, I have no idea what's going to happen next. Mike Margolis uh, told me he said, "Well, you just like those Red Bar guys," <laughs> and he's right. Yeah, uh, the Red Bar guys are the ones. What they'll do is they'll they're sort of like gorilla uh, watch collectors, is that they're going to find a seam somewhere and they'll pick it up out of the seam. And they rarely go into an AD. I've dealt with ADs, and I've had one of the best deals I ever got was from an AD. So I'm not against them, but there are other places and places to look that are that are fun, I think. Uh, and one last thing, too. Um I was warned off going to 47th Street by uh, Federico. He said, Bill, don't go to 47th Street. Like it's, you know, look, I was going into the red light district of watch collectors, and it may be that, but uh, I got two of the best deals I ever got, ever uh, on 47th. So, mm -hmm. anyway. Yep. And I, I have, no, have, I have I mean, no horror stories. You know, I've, all my watch buying and selling and everything else, I've, I've never had bad experiences. It's just, uh, you yeah. buy the color first, kind of know know who you're buying from, know who you're selling to, do your due mm -hmm. diligence, be careful. You know, so ID guy, I saw a comment on there. I'm, I'm, I'm first and foremost drawn to dial aesthetics, readability mm -hmm. of a watch. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I, so, you know, I'm not, uh, you know, generally sort of 38 to 42 millimeters is my is my sweet spot size wise. I think, you know, I think we're in this era where there's also so much more to be discovered. And I think that's why these other brands like um, Megan, you and your dad and your family are, are uh, you know, uh, brand enthusiasts for uh, Gerard Perigo. They're really not well represented in the U.S. And I'd love to learn more, and I'd and I'd love to explore brands like that, like uh, Urban Jurgensen uh, Rancher. You know, there's just so many more things that that we can learn. And I think that in an opportunity where certain brands are very very difficult to acquire, that's when you start to find some of these less known, under the radar type brands that probably have some you know good longer term appreciation to them. I agree. And that was the question I was going to have is who, who, if anyone has influenced you or in your buying choices, or at least bringing aware, awareness or attention to a brand or to a, or to a uh, reference. Oh, you know, I think it's all the social media. So clearly Tim Masso, uh, the horology talk. I learn a lot from, you know, I jump on Bill's Saturday streams. I learn a lot about independence, you know, Stefan Kadoki is a watch that I purchased because of uh, being aware from, from Bill's channel, uh, you know, the stuff here. Yeah, he, he uh, totally has that effect on people. Yeah, yes, the, you know, <laughs> he does. <laughs> here, learning, learning about things, the groups, you know, I wouldn't have known if it weren't for Watch Time New York, I wouldn't have known about Gronfeld and the and the Remontoir. So mm -hmm. it's it's really, I mean, I learn a lot from the, I learn a lot from these streams, um, you know, the news that NS something does, you know, a lot of times, the first time I'm reading about a watch or hearing about a watch is, uh, is from this Sunday stream sometimes. So, you know, I, I take it all in. Great. Great stuff. Thank you. Yeah. But Bill yeah, has that, that dangerous that. effect on, on, on people. Uh, sorry, Thomas, go ahead. I was just going to say on that note from the Sunday streams, yeah, we've had a wonderful collection today from Rick, but don't be intimidated, people. If you want us to go th over your collection, we'd be more than ha happy, and uh, you can get in touch with us at explore2 uh, yahoo.com. The uh, email address is on the screen, and if uh, 
you'd like to go through your collection with us, um, we'd be more than happy. So you could get in touch with us and uh, come on the stream and uh, show us your collection, share it with the punters. And, right. And uh, just like Rick has done today, and then we can make a great show of it. But Rick, yep. you, you've been you've been amazing today. It's just absolutely mind Agreed. blowing what we've seen today. It's just Agreed. absolutely yeah. um, mind blowing. Uh, really, really amazing. Um, well, and the thing is, why I like about you is that you are. A, I think you're a true enthusiast. It's not like it's not like I've caught you taking cheap shots at anyone else's collection or looking down on somebody else mm-hmm. or at their watches. Yeah, As a matter of fact, I, I did not. I did when it comes to the Zenith the pilot watch. Out of respect, I did not hit you with that line, and I wanted to so bad. I, I was going to say it too, but I was very proud of you, Rancher, that that you didn't say it. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, he has protect pilot watch. My bad. Right. Yes. I I think that Rick, as a former NFL player, has been very humble about his uh, his background and so forth. So <laughs> that was good to see. <laughs> <laughs> well, he he's a true he's a true enthusiast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. That's yeah. I think that's you can see that in the collection. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, I can. Uh, people are asking, uh, you know, how do you follow after this collection? Well, I've got an answer for you, fellas. Um, next week for Mother's Day, we're actually going to take a break. We're we're not going to be on the air. Um, uh, we're going to go take our treat some moms. Right. We're going to spend some family time, uh, you know, with the family and and recharge our batteries. But when we come back on May sixteenth. The collection that we're going to review is the one and only Dr. Bill Sanders. So yeah. that's how we follow up this collection. Well, I feel awesome. sorry for the poor slob after Rick's collection. Uh, <laughs> Bill has a wonderful, wonderful curated collection. Yeah, okay. We'll see you guys. Thanks again, Rick. All right, everybody. Thanks so much. Yep. Yeah, thank uh, you so everybody. much. Everybody. Thank you so very, very much, um, everybody who's watched us uh, for now almost three hours. Uh, ID guy, we're, we're not going to break one of your records, so don't, no, don't worry no, about ID that. Um, Rick, I, I can't thank you enough. Um, Absolutely, Rick. Yeah, we can't thank you enough. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, Given us the so honor of... Uh, uh, of doing the uh, going through your entire collection for the first time, um, we really, really appreciate it. Um, you're a gentleman and uh, and a good sport, and uh, and you've got a fantastic collection. And uh, congratulations, and thank you again. My pleasure, Absolutely. everybody. Absolutely. Thanks for putting up with the marathon. Have a good week, if everybody. You, if you give Rick a thumbs up, that'd be great, everyone. And, uh, show yep. everyone and how don't much you love it. Don't forget to follow Rick on Instagram, uh, Rick underscore on Absolutely. underscore watches. Um, yeah. So give 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 him a follow. Uh, Rancher, any closing thoughts? Um, I'll save them for after the stream ends. Oh, All you right. meant oh you meant for the stream, right? Sorry. Right. Uh, uh, let's enjoy your what? Let's enjoy Rick's watches and be good to each other. <laughs> All right, everybody. Um, Thank you for joining us again. Thank you, Rick. Um, Happy Mother's Day to everybody out there. Um, We'll be off next week, and we'll see you again on the 16th uh, with uh, Bill Sanders' review. Take care, everybody. Take care, everyone. See you in a couple of weeks. See ya. Later, fellas.